one day I have to take initiation, one day I will join the temple, one fine day I will become a temple president and one day I will take sannyas and one final day I will become a guru. That will be the point of my perfection of my life. Have you read the Bhagavad Gita? I said no. Then he said you read this, this is different. Immediately I put the book down, I, I decided I will not write it. One of my best friends in college, his father passed away. So again it hit me that you know what is this there is no permanence in this material world that is surprising you a person going to depression not go, knowing the purpose of life <laughs> to these days kids go to depression for weird things and madhu pandit prabhu was known to be very really strong proponent of the guru system there will be smoke and suddenly your chair will go into the floor the moment you put water the whole earth would become white with salt and the bird and the, all the plants would all burn away. They would dry out and they would not grow. My mouth would not open. Atiks and Emmets and Kureshis are killed now. Those days they are full throttle. They were, that is yeah, their Raj. The Madhu Pandit Prabhu started thinking, you know, if Radharani has blessed with, with so much land in Vandavan, there must be some higher plant. Hare Krishna folks. Welcome to the brand new episode of Frankly Speaking. Today's guest is quite unique. He was a rancho of his college times. We would top the class without any endeavor. But certain events in his life took turns and made him ponder and think, what's life? And this thought made him ask the most fundamental questions, which eventually led him to read Bhagavad Gita as it is by Swami Prabhupada, which made him take a decision to give his life for Krishna, imagine, without even started chanting. That is the power of Srila Prabhupada books. Then eventually he took up a lot of leadership positions all across Hare Krishna movement centers and a life instance which turned out to be very serious where he was finding it difficult to chant his 16 rounds every single day which would take him more than 10 hours to do so. Folks, decades in the service of Srila Prabhupada his grace, Suvakta Narasimha Prabhu. This podcast has a lot of insights, a lot of life lessons and a lot of things to learn. Association, association, association. That's what the Shastra says. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. Sarva Shastra Kahe Sadhu Sangha. A wonderful podcast of Sadhu Sangha. Please do watch without fail the whole episode. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, welcome to brand new episode of Frankly Speaking. Today we have a special guest, His Grace Suvikta Narsimha Prabhu. Let me take the privilege of introducing him. Suvikta Narsimha Prabhu was born in 1973 in Muay Tupura in Ernakulam district of state of Kerala. He completed his Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical from MS Ramai Institute of Technology and he stood fifth rank in the Bangalore University. After graduation, he worked with Lincoln Helios India Limited as a design engineer. After becoming a full-time missionary of ISKCON, Bangalore in 1999, he has been dedicating his skills and expertise for the welfare of the society. Suvakta Narasimha Prabhu has not only designed, commissioned and successfully operationalized Akshay Patra centralized kitchens in Vrindavan, Lucknow, Jaipur and other locations in India. He has been instrumental in setting up of the sprawling Vrindavan Chandrodaya Mandir campus, which is going to the tallest temple in the world. He is currently serving as a president of Hare Krishna Movement Chennai and overseeing the operations of Akshay Patra Foundation in the state of Tamil Nadu. He is also the member of governing body commission of the worldwide Hare Krishna Movement. Help me welcome His Grace Suvakta Narasimha Prabhu for the show. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Prabhu, as we start, generally we start with the childhood uh, things, your experiences. There's, Prabhupada once said probably, you know, in India everybody is born Krishna devotee. Was it so for you too in your family or it's after coming in touch with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada's institution or books, you became a devotee. How was it? Well, uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, uh, Indians, all Indians are exposed to Lord Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita and uh, they have some idea about God and, and that Krishna is God, etc. Of course, uh, the family in which I grew up, I grew up in a conservative family. Uh, my parents were are very religious and uh, it was very common in our family to go to temples very often. 
maybe in a week we would go to a temple uh, two or three times in a week and uh, we would go to all temples we would go to shiva temples durga temples uh, there used to be a gayatri temple near our uh, house in uh, bangalore and uh, whenever i would go to kerala which is my native place during vacations when you used to go during the vacations summer vacations during the, when the schools were closed um, uh, my sister and i would be in our native place for about one or two months so during that time uh, it was uh, a common practice to visit some of the uh, temples which were all nearby we would go to uh, mostly they were all shiva temples but one visit to guruvayur would always be a must mm. and uh, guruvayur of course you oh, know course, is yes. again a krishna, krishna temple, temple. Mm. not only that uh, even in our uh, uh, even when we were in bangalore uh, we as a family would uh, visit tirupati balaji once every year that oh. was another must mm. in our family so that way we had exposure to krishna mm. yes mm. but the philosophy was missing mm. i had no idea that krishna was the supreme lord for me mm. all of them seemed to be the same just like any of an indian uh, any normal indian, indian would indian think like that. like that so that's how i grew up uh, but that um, inculcation of uh, visiting temples and and uh, and uh, accepting that there is a supreme lord always helped because finally when i read prabhupada's books everything fell into place mm. and uh, i could really understand the meaning behind everything that we used to do temples we used to visit etc mm. and that's when really i understood the position of krishna yeah. by the by the uh, by the uh, grace of mm. uh, his divine grace shila prabhupada fifth rank in the university and a design engineer in the one of the private uh, company what went wrong or obviously went right <laughs> that uh, you decided to take this up seriously that many of them would practice you would been pra- practicing krishna consciousness at home with your family and what was that which made you take a call that this is it from now i have to do this as a full time not as just meering visiting a temple on a weekend or a yatra to vrindavan occasionally what yeah. was that yeah externally it looks like uh, you know it's it looks like a uh, sudden cataclysmic change in life lifestyle etc but internally for me it was not so mm. why because right from about when i was in about 8th or 9th standard which is i would have been in my teens uh, a question used to run in my mind what is the purpose of my existence so you were inquisitive in that sense it, i was inquisitive inquisitive in the sense that that question would run in my mind mm-hmm. every day at night when i would go to bed i wouldn't be able to sleep because this question would keep pestering me and i would keep thinking about it that what what am i going to do with my life maybe you know i will uh, even when in school i used to think just mere teenager used to have this yes, thought process yes. mm-hmm. as you know like i said when i was about 13 14 mm-hmm. years old mm-hmm. that's when this questioning started happening in my mind finally some day i would graduate i'd maybe become an engineer or a doctor or whatever then i would get a job maybe if i do very well in life i may maximum i can become the ceo of some mm. company mm. after that what i will get married i'll have children children will get educated mm. they will take up a job they will marry they will have children i mean what what is <laughs> the, uh, life doesn't seem to be just this much. so you didn't subscribe to the conformity of the society it, it didn't it didn't it didn't make sense to me at all that this should be the purpose of life mm. making money or getting a position in life didn't seem to be the It, it it just didn't seem to fit in mm-hmm. that life could be just this so you know endlessly going on repeating the same cycle which people have repeated over and over again so i wouldn't be able to sleep at night of course i never asked this question to anybody i didn't ask <laughs> my parents i didn't ask my teachers it just that it kept gnawing at my conscience that i want to find out what is the purpose of my life and uh, i used to think god must have created me for some purpose that used to run in my mind what is that purpose i want to find out okay so it kept uh, spinning in my mind all through then uh, i c- completed my school got into college all through this question still kept gnawing at my mind so this this kept going on and when i was in about second year of my engineering my grandfather passed away mm-hmm. so i was uh, because i used to visit my native place every year spend about two months there so i was very close with my grandfather so that was a big shock for me mm-hmm. that was when the reality hit me that people don't live forever mm. 
relationships do get uh, they do break up so uh, this was the first real uh, shake up in my life and then a few months later one of my best friends in college his father passed away mm -hmm. so again it hit me mm. that you know what is this there is no permanence in this material like world buddha saw dead body and an old man exactly yeah. buddha was far more intelligent <laughs> he saw dead body and he, for me it you know it needed two people who whom i knew very closely mm. and whom i uh, whom i had a lot of affection and respect for to pass away to be able to mm. you know to be able to understand that this is the reality of life and then i started thinking you know like i was a youngster uh, in my 20s so naturally uh, young people have that idealism in life mm. so i had that idealistic thinking that maybe you know love between a boy and a girl is must be the most mm. purest and divine thing which will last forever so you were looking for a relationship i was not looking for a relationship but i used to think used that think maybe like that. Okay. maybe this maybe. is something which okay. is permanent mm -hmm. maybe even if people die the love will last mm. and things like that and funnily enough what happened was my closest friend he had an affair with a girl mm -hmm. in college and uh, after about a year they both break uh, they both broke up okay and i was and i was the guy who was really shattered uh -huh. <laughs> more than my friend because for me it, it another reality struck that even the love between a boy and a girl doesn't last forever uh -huh. there are breakups there are divorces then this struck me all he, this realization even prior to coming in touch with krishna consciousness i had absolutely no idea of krishna consciousness at that time okay this is all what i was seeing in front of my eyes happening mm -hmm. so i was wondering then what is it that is permanent in life mm -hmm. so i practically went into a very depressed kind of state mm -hmm. and it reflected in my even in my academics also i performed very poorly in my second this is little uh, surprising you go, a person going to depression not go, knowing the purpose of life <laughs> to these days kids go to depression for weird things yeah, yeah. of course yeah. and and in fact in reality mm. i never worked hard to do well in academics or mm. anything like mm -hmm. that and i never expected never aspired to you know be like that mm. but in somehow by krishna arrangement maybe the law of karma or whatever mm -hmm. even in my first uh, year of engineering uh, when the results came out you know all the my friends were rushing to the board because those days mm -hmm. it used to be all put up physically on the board. notice board and i was like who will go into that uh, you know <laughs> into that crowd let everybody cool off and i was waiting coolly waiting for everybody to disperse so that i can go and see mm. i had no big uh, expectations mm. suddenly one of my friends come rushing back mm. he holds me and lifts me up in the air i said hey what's wrong mm. he said you are number 1 in the whole <laughs> college i said what <laughs> okay it was like that you know yeah. and uh, more be, than me my friends were happy rancho of your college <laughs> <laughs> i don't know maybe maybe so so you know so uh, i mean it was it was like that it was all it came on its own accord mm -hmm. so second year of course of my engineering as i told by then mm. all these things started happening and these questions started really affecting me very poor very badly mm. and so my academics also went down mm. i dropped down to maybe some 20th in the college or something like that still 20th is not a bad number for you <laughs> <laughs> going by his, by what uh, by how i had performed it was really bad yeah. and my friends were all what happened to this guy yeah. you know so everybody got understand that something was not okay yeah. but i was battling all these inner demons i was not able to really uh, reconcile these realities of life so you know uh, i struggled with this and then what happened was now in between other things were also happening in my life krishna was actually started um, you know as uh, the upanishad state uh, dwas uparna sayuja as a, the paramatma is seated as a second bird in the heart he is always waiting when the bird will turn towards him so mm. probably maybe mm. krishna felt mm. the time is right, right. for this uh, living entity mm. so uh, <coughs> my friend who uh, vikram krishna prabhu mm -hmm. we both studied together in uh, mm. plus 1 and plus 2 two. two years we studied together and we we had become quite close and i respected him a lot because he was mm -hmm. very intelligent and all that and uh, he did not opt to go for engineering but he did a bsc degree mm -hmm. his idea was of course that he would be a, do a bsc degree and then he will get into ias mm -hmm. that was his goal mm -hmm. in life and he wanted to do bsc mm -hmm. so that he would do he would say one year one year yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that was you know mm -hmm. all those planning he had done, he had done. Mm -hmm. so he did his bsc passed out with flying colors got a gold medal and all that and uh, we found out that uh, you know to our surprise he had joined the temple as a full time missionary okay so even when we were in plus 1 and plus 2 this was 1989 90 mm -hmm. 
so he had uh, taken us a uh, group of mm -hmm. uh, friends mm -hmm. from college he had taken us to the krishna balaram temple mm -hmm. in uh, hare krishna hill the new temple was still mm -hmm. under construction, under construction. Mm -hmm. so we had gone had darshan and all that and like any other temple we also mm -hmm. paid our respects and all that so after he i introduced us to his khan once in a while mm -hmm. i and another friend of mine we would visit the krishna balaram temple off and on so uh, <clears throat> now when he joined the temple in third year uh, i was in third year of uh, my engineering degree he completed his third year and joined so <clears throat> i went and uh, met him mm. and uh, just wanted to mm. express my support mm -hmm. somehow in while others may not have uh, felt what he did was right mm. i felt great respect in my heart mm -hmm. and uh, i went and expressed my respect for him and support also and then uh, once in a while i would visit the temple so uh, what happened was once i was uh, uh, had come to the temple and uh, one devotee venuvadan prabhu mm -hmm. he had just joined the temple as a bhakta mm -hmm. so he was standing at the geeta counter you know it was the old mm, temple old small temple, shed, shed. temple mm -hmm. hall itself there was a small counter and all that so i was uh, looking at the counter and i saw a copy of the bhagavad geeta so i thought i was uh, looking at the bhagavad geeta and a uh, little bit i became inquisitive because being born into a hindu family i had not read the bhagavad gita so i had no idea what its contents were so what was running in my mind if somebody asked me what is there in the bhagavad gita what do i answer so it will be good to read it i thought and i was you know i held the bhagavad gita and i was looking at it i was in two minds not decided mm -hmm. whether i should buy not mm -hmm. buy because it was 300 rupees mm -hmm. one copy of the bhagavad gita at that time mm -hmm. you can imagine in the 92 or 93 maybe 92 93 i think yeah mm -hmm. 93 so th that was a lot of money at that time mm -hmm. so i was thinking whether to buy or not buy then venuvadan prabhu asked me have you read the bhagavad gita i said no then he said you read this this is different mm -hmm. immediately i put the book down i i decided i'll not buy this why <laughs> because the moment he said this is different, different i thought how can it be different uh -huh. bhagavad gita is one uh -huh. it cannot be different uh -huh. how can it be different so then i thought i i will not know whether it is same or different unless i read some other bhagavad gita uh. so the moment he said that i decided i'll read some other gita then i'll read, read this gita <laughs> so okay. i put this down uh. so then i from another some friend of mine i managed to get another copy of uh, bhagavad gita written by some mayavadi mm -hmm. and i read the whole thing you will not believe it after reading it i found from that mayavadi interpretation of the bhagavad gita itself i picked up some things about vairagya renunciation mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. by which i got a lot of uh, peace of mind and uh, i could you know reconcile this uh, uh, this difficulty i had in mind about impermanence mm -hmm. and all those kind of things i realized that this temper this material world is not the real place mm -hmm. of course i had not understood that krishna is the supreme person or anything like that but still mm -hmm. some uh, you know some sort of solace i got so i was literally back on my feet mm -hmm. i was you know again on third year i was again on the top of the uh, college charts mm -hmm. and all those mm -hmm. kind of stuff so anyway uh, all this was happening by the side so i read the bhagavad gita next uh, you know couple of years i'd finished my third year of engineering fourth year of engineering i would every weekend whenever i would get time i would go to the temple i would uh, meet uh, vikram prabhu mm -hmm. and we would have big arguments <laughs> he would be trying to explain uh, bhagavad gita to me in the right way and i would be opposing with all mayavadi arguments uh -huh. because you read the other bhagavad gita yeah uh -huh. so i was heavily influenced by that mm -hmm. and uh, one time he told me why don't you take one mala and start chanting he was literally begging me uh -huh. i was like no 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 uh -huh. if i take that mala i'll be increasing my uh, what do you say possessions uh -huh. and i'll be thinking uh, there is one more thing which will be added to my list that this is mine uh -huh. so i don't want to call anything mine influence so i will of, not i will not take this <laughs> influence of mayavadi so much that even you don't want to possess a mala <laughs> he was vikram prabhu was like you know where did i get caught up with this fellow <laughs> so you know so you know we would hours together we would be arguing back and forth and uh, one uh, i told you about another friend common friend we had uh, his name was shiv kumar he would also come and he would be sitting and watching this whole battle between <laughs> going on between the two of us one mayavadi which is me and the other is a devotee and uh, you know hearing vikram vikram krishna prabhu this other um, uh, friend of mine he started chanting right <laughs> but he never told me because he thought if i tell me i will fire him uh, so the way i was so strongly arguing with vikram prabhu so he suddenly started chanting i wouldn't chant and then uh, this went on till i completed my engineering mm. and then uh, i got a job in a, in an mnc and i started working there and once i started working 
I decided that it was time to fulfill the promise I made to myself that I would read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita also and and uh, mm. compare the two. I had not done that after mm. reading the first Gita because mm. I, I had got mm. too much caught up in my academics, getting a job and all that. So then I started, I went to the temple, bought Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita and started reading. Mm -hmm. And believe me, till that point I was still a, you, you can say I was, I was literally a Mayavadi. Mm -hmm. I was not chanting Hare Krishna. But still you would go to temple and have a debate with Vikram Krishna Prabhu. Vikram Krishna Prabhu. Mm -hmm. I would pay my respects to Krishna mm -hmm. Balaram. All that was mm -hmm. there. Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, inherently mm -hmm. that faith in God is there. Mm -hmm. So I started reading Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. I had not read any of Prabhupada's mm -hmm. books. Not attended any classes. Mm -hmm. Other than arguing with Vikram Krishna Prabhu, there was no... Pre this has been three years now then. It had been three, mm -hmm. uh, second, second year, year to fourth uh, year, about uh, two, uh, years. two years. Mm -hmm. Two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more year of you know, working. working and all that, about six months of working. And then I started reading Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. It, it took me almost uh, six months to complete the Gita. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day I would uh, go from uh, home to the factory and from the factory back to home in the factory bus. So I would have about 45 minutes, one hour sitting in the bus because my house was in Matikare mm -hmm. and the factory was in Old Madras Road. Mm -hmm. So every day 45 40 minutes, minutes, one hour I used to get. I would sit and read. Mm -hmm. So every day I read, 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 read and finally finished. I still remember very uh, clearly. The moment I finished the Bhagavad Gita and I closed the book, it was in March of 1996. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the company bus. Mm -hmm. It was a blue and white colored bus. I still remember very <laughs> clearly. I was sitting on the left side of the bus, sitting at the window seat. There was no one next. One of the turning points of your life probably. It was a moment of hippie fanning for me. Okay. I closed the book and the first thought that crossed my mind was, I was looking out of the window, the bus was zipping by. And uh, although I was looking out, I was not seeing anything. What was going on in my mind is, what Prabhupada says in the Bhagavad Gita is true. Krishna is the Supreme Person. This other Bhagavad Gita I read has completely missed the central point of the Bhagavad Gita, which is Krishna is the Supreme Person. This thought crossed my mind. And then I thought, when I am, when I am accepting that whatever Prabhupada is saying is right, then I have to follow whatever he says in full. And the only option for me is that I have to join the temple. You can imagine that. I was so, we thought even chanting. I was not chanting even one book. I read once. only Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Gita. I have not read anything Gita. else. Yeah. And this was my realization. I have to chant. I have to join the temple. Mm. Then I thought, but how will I leave my family? How will I leave my... Especially, I was very attached to my mother. So, I thought, how will I leave my mother? It's impossible to leave, for me to leave my family and join the temple. But anyway, let me see. In future, things will be revealed. But this is my decision in my life. I have understood what is the purpose in, in life. All the questions which were troubling me all these years, finally I found an answer for this. Everything, every reality of life was now reconciled and I was at peace with myself. And I decided I am going to, this is the path I am going to follow. So the following, that week, the following Sunday, I went to the temple, met Vikram Prabhu and first time I did not argue with him. Mm -hmm. I said, Prabhu, uh, after, you know, morning uh, prasadam, after the Bhagavatam class, I went to his cabin and he was sitting there. And he thought, okay, again, debate mm -hmm. is going to mm -hmm. start. I said, uh, Prabhu, I want to start chanting. Mm -hmm. He, Vikram Prabhu was shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he literally almost fell off. His, he said, what? <laughs> what am I hearing? <laughs> it was music to his ears. Mm -hmm. He immediately rushed to the counter and took me along. And uh, personally, he took out a mala, gave it in my hand and told, showed me how to chant and all that. And from that day, I started it's chanting one mala. Gradually, you know, it's over a period of time, increased it to two, four, etc. Mm. And finally came to 16 rounds. Mm. So, that was my journey. And mm. finally, three years later, in 1999, some of the mm. events unfolded in such a way that I joined the temple and I became full-time missionary. Okay. Bro. So, that was my journey. <laughs> if I recollect, it, is, it was on August 10th, 1999, yes. when you yeah. joined the temple. Yeah, right. Because... Uh, I remember that uh, date very uh, very well because the next day was an eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I remember the date. Okay, it was just two weeks after the uh, Kargil war got over, <laughs> and there's another war going inside the temple. Yeah, that so, war was a bigger war for me than the Kargil war. <laughs> so we never been there. We were just born into Shila Prabhupada's ESCON, uh, MPP or CPP, and. Uh, all the devotees who were there during times have seen that. So, if you can just share a few ex experiences which you went through so that we can also re relish and recollect and you know, rejoice the fight which you 
yeah put up yeah yeah it it is something really memorable mm. and uh, probably you know once in how many lifetimes i don't know a <laughs> devotee gets an opportunity to participate in a struggle to bring the yeah. spiritual master mm. back to his rightful place mm. so what happened was uh, till about 1998 Uh, we were also firmly of the uh, conviction that uh, the guru system which runs in iskon was the one which was instituted by prabhupad mm-hmm. that was our the, the 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 false understanding that we were given mm-hmm. that this is what prabhupad this is the way prabhupad instituted in iskon the guru system to run was actually the 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 foundation of our faith in that system mm-hmm. so we had no idea about july 9th letter or that how these 11 acharyas had assumed those roles and then later on it was conter- converted into a multiple acharya system and all those things so we were not aware of all these things you know we were in 1998 mm-hmm. all this happened in, mm-hmm. in the 80s and 70s and all that so we you know we were fully into that system and uh, those days when uh, the iskon gurus would come to bangalore and uh, i was personally an aspiring uh, disciple of one of the uh, gurus mm. in in the iskon system and uh, we used to have uh, separate guru puja for him at 7 o'clock 7:15 would be darshanarthi after that it would be guru puja guru puja for That's prabhupada right. so we were strongly followers of that system you can say in that sense and madhu pandit prabhu was known to be mm. very really strong proponent of the guru system mm. and uh, so in 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 about 1998 is when the guru issue broke out so until then i, I was literally at that point of time when the guru issue broke out uh, i was in that ashraya system where in another 6 months i would have taken initiation mm. i was for, uh, chanting 16 rounds whether in the temple or outside temple i, would, I was initiation. outside the temple mm. but mm. you know it was mm. almost there mm. so then what happened so uh, you know prior to the guru issue breaking out the way the guru system would run uh, i would like to you know give you an understanding of the 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 impact it has on the consciousness of the devotees who are part of that system so as part of that system my aspiration as a devotee would was always uh, one day i have to take initiation one day i will join the temple one fine day i'll become a temple president and one day i'll take sanyas and one final day i'll become a guru that will be the point of my perfection of my life this is a corporate ladder type of thing <laughs> this was very clear in my mind uh, <laughs> my goal was clear they said one day even before you took up initiation this was your even goal before initiation it was very clear to me uh, this is the path i have to take and one day i have to become a guru uh, so and becoming a guru is is the point where my life will be perfect mm, in summit of perfection yes this this was my understanding and this was my uh, aspiration and every day i would dream about this and uh, in our uh, houses also we would have the guru parampara um, uh, there would be uh, jagannath das baba ji maharaj mm. then there would be bhakti mano thakur gorkishor das baba ji maharaj uh, there would be bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur and then uh, prabhupad and then mm. this mm. Uh, current guru okay. all you know combined mm. one mm. guru parampara mm. which would be sold in the counters Counters. in the temple and i also bought and kept in my tem- in my house and started worshiping and my mother would look at me and tell me you know why are you worshiping this westerner <laughs> <laughs> i would say no 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 you don't know he is a pure devotee is a paramahamsa and all those things uh, and uh, but my mother would be okay theek hai anyway something is doing mm-hmm. let him be doing a good thing let him do mm-hmm. so like that it used to go on <clears throat> so then when the guru issue broke out in 1998 Uh, we as you know we when i say we me and uh, a few of my friends who used to do uh, service in the temple on every weekend i used to go to work and a few of my friends also <coughs> who used to uh, be working outside maybe in different other companies places etc we would be free on weekends saturday sundays we would come to the temple saturday sunday we would be engaged in full day service so practically for about 3 4 months after the guru issue broke out it became a you know buzzing thing in the whole uh, hari krishna hill temple everybody was talking about we were not aware of it at all mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, we were like uh, we came did our service to prasadam went back that. mm-hmm. that's mind, all. mind your business mm-hmm. ha so so mm-hmm. we hardly had time mm-hmm. to talk to mm-hmm. anyone about all this 
one fine day one devotee one of the other congregation devotees called the other friend of mine shiv kumar i told you that he called him and uh, he asked him you know what do you think about this guru issue so he said what guru what? issue he said you come to me uh, to my house i will explain to you so this uh, devotee because he was uh, my close friend he came to me and he said he called me he called us to his house i said for what he said some guru issue i don't know what he wanted to uh, talk he said guru issue what guru issue i also don't know mm. so he said uh, why we have to go to his home we'll go to vikram Pr- krishna mm. prabhu and ask no mm. so we went to vikram krishna prabhu mm-hmm. and he was sitting in his cabin and uh, we spoke to him and we told him somebody told some guru issue what is this mm. he said oh that he pulled out a copy of the july 9 letter and gave it to us and he said read mm. he didn't tell anything to us mm. he just gave it to us and read mm. we sat there and read it for about you know it takes mm. about 2 3 minutes mm. to read it and we kept it down very clear mm. so so we said oh acha so suddenly in my mind all my dreams aspirations everything got shut <laughs> okay <laughs> everything gone for a toss <laughs> anyway i was i was not i was not sad about it but yeah. you know i accepted it okay this is what prabhupad wanted mm. so i said oh this is something which is new this is a new uh, discovery so that means uh, prabhupad is the guru mm. he said yeah prabhupad is the guru so i referred to the our uh, you know the uh, guru whom we were aspiring to take initiation from i said so does uh, so he also accept this you know mm. b- because we had great respect for him Uh, having been mm. a direct disciple of prabhupad served him lot and all that we thought he must also be mm. you know the guru's mm. direction is the foremost thing in life then vikram prabhu said mm, well he is still convinced that the guru system is the right thing so we were like what you know what is there to be convinced whatever mm. prabhupad said you have to follow that's mm. all said so, you know but he is still like that i said okay let him be like that we'll be like this <laughs> so the, practically there was no preaching required to us there were no questions in our mind we just read the july 9 letter it was clear to us this is what prabhupad wants i would say 2 to 3 2 to 3 minutes we read that okay. immediately the the the, the switch over happened oh, we had no questions in our mind it was crystal clear to us this is what prabhupad wanted so now the point is after getting this in our hand then vikram prabhu started revealing you know what all is going on the tussle the fight then we started understanding how big the matter has become and then actually i went back to the to to the computers in the temple and i wanted to read the july 9 letter on the veda base at that time the veda base was called folio and it was a dos based version and i searched in the whole veda base you will be surprised to know that it was not there in the veda base till about i think 2003 3 or something like that it was not there in the veda base so deliberately it was it was hidden from the view of the uh, common rank and file devotees after 2003 the new windows based veda base came in that day they included this letter so it was really surprising that we had been deceived like this so we felt really cheated that we had been led down the wrong path like this we were never given an o- option to look at the reality and and at least okay this is the july 9 letter this is the system we are following this is our conviction these are the arguments no discussion like that Dire- just like that we are we are the the july 9 letter is hidden from us and we are told that this is the system prabhupada instituted we are not told about the controversies and the same old story no no ritvik is all uh, poison you should not listen to it it is my avada and put the fear of god in your heart and see that you don't read anything related to this fear of aparad the fear of aparad the guru aparad vaishnava aparad blah 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 the fear of my father put every fear possible into that guy's heart so that he doesn't dare to read the july 9 letter you know this is not the way things are supposed to be done we are supposed to be an institution where the quest for truth is the highest thing and the integrity is the is the most valuable thing in our society unfortunately uh, you know at the topmost level we had been deceived but our good fortune madhu pandit prabhu chanchalapati prabhu jay chaitanya prabhu maharaj all these uh, senior vaishnavas at that time in bangalore temple took a very strong stand that uh, we would uh, no matter come what we would uh, continue to follow on the path of the truth and we would not deviate from it do you remember the scenario where they were supposed to come and take over a temple just like they did it for kolkata and you were given a particular place to guard the temple in the night especially that was one of the high points uh-huh. <laughs> actually in uh, when i joined the temple in 1999 uh, 
things were in very uh, you know it was in a very bad shape in the in terms of uh, our uh, stability and reliability of uh, our continuing our uh, uh, existential threat your life in in the temple the ex the ex existential threat was very looming very large as you rightly said the existential threat was looming very large it it was a damocles sword hanging over our head um, so practically what had happened at that time was um, with the calcutta temple also being overthrown and taken over by you know all kinds of ruffians dressed as uh, devotees and all that that threat was very real and we did not know when such an attack is going to take place in bangalore so uh, uh, what would happen was madhupandit prabhu and chanchalapati prabhu would be traveling very often they would be traveling to different temples and meeting different leaders and trying to explain things to them and trying to uh, bring about a, 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 a sort of uh, uh, understanding in the iskon society that this july 9th letter is what we have to follow and all that so we would be in this temple bunch of youngsters and uh, we would not know what is going to happen tomorrow whether tomorrow we will be in this temple or not we don't know so we spent a, a couple of years like that and uh, then uh, of course the court case happened and we we won in the lower court and it was a very big victory for us and uh, when then the they went on appeal to the high court and uh, after a few months of few months or i don't know ex i don't recall exactly how much how long it took but finally when the high court verdict came it overturned the lower court uh, verdict you know this you know these are all unpredictable things lot of things uh, go on uh, so when that high court overturned the verdict was the time when there was a window given to us to approach the supreme court for 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 to appeal against the high court spl for, now during that window we had no certainty what would happen <clears throat> so the the other uh, camp they came with a lot of people and uh, we had to inform the police the police also came and uh, uh, so th they wanted to barge into our temple on the basis of the high court verdict so we had to tell the police that uh, they cannot barge in like that first of all they have to get a decree to Uh, to to implement that order of the high court which will not happen until and unless we lose in the supreme court and we have we have been given a window to of time to go to the supreme court until that time they cannot disturb us <clears throat> so the police was also you know they wanted they did not want any trouble between two groups and all that and and they they did not allow them to enter all those kind of things happened but still we were in great anxiety so during the night time and during the day time we had created a vigil there would be devotees positioned on different parts of the temple somebody on top of the guest house somebody at the main gate somebody near the footwear counter somebody on top of the uh, plaza you know everywhere devotees were somebody on top of the brahmachari ashram and we would take turns shifts somebody would be, uh, they, we would be at our post for about 5 6 hours and somebody will come and relieve us you know, like that and uh, day and night we were on the we were on vigil and during that time uh, there were a lot of attempts they came in a bus with about uh, 100 or 200 people and they wanted to storm in which is when the police we called the police police also came and they did not allow them to come in and uh, they, there were uh, some other people also who tried to come in there was one maharaj who came with a couple of his uh, disciples and he barged in and tried to walk up and tried to assert himself and uh, of course you know vyompat prabhu was there at the main gate and and he had the uh, he had the courage to hold him by the hand and take him out and escort him out and leave him out <laughs> so we had to do all that we had no choice we were we were you know facing that existential threat and uh, so uh, so finally we managed to go to the supreme court and by krishna's and prabhupada's grace we managed to overcome that period of real high uncertainty and uh, it was it was it was a really you know a very tense situation true for a common man looking at this august institution fighting like this can't we have a truce or a, um, <clears throat> talk to them and i had this question to madhupan prabhu also mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. said how what we have, we have offered which no, yes. nobody can even think of it yes. in spite of that what do you why, what do you think the reason that they can't accept that offer well it is very simple you see um, in the court as far as the courts are concerned the allegation against madhupan prabhu is that the bangalore temple is the property of iskon mumbai and that it has been unlawfully usurped that is the this one so the the case in the court is only related to the 
Bangalore temple alone. Okay. Theological basis, you cannot fight a case. Yeah, uh, so uh, they, they have they have uh, tried to uh, uh, put a criminal case uh -huh. and try to take away the, uh, the the temple. So now what has happened is uh, the court when it heard this matter, the court said in the court when we went to the court we said the the genesis of this dispute is the is not really property it is the philosophical basis the differences. So the court said. Why don't you mediate? Why don't you two parties sit together and try to sort it out? Because as far as the court is concerned, they saw that uh, you know the, these are two um, uh, two um, uh, spiritual uh, uh, parts of the same organization. Some misunderstanding between the two, they are fighting. That's how the court sees it. In fact, in the Supreme Court, uh, one of the you know one time their advocate, they uh, he stood up and said, uh, "My Lord, if you don't." Uh, uh, hand over the uh, temple to us. These, uh, this, uh, this man, Madhu Pandit Das, will sell it to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, that was they wanted to create a, yeah. you know, a, a fear. Uh, this one in the, this one that he is going to do something. So our advocate at that time was Arun Jaitley. Mm -hmm. He was not a minister yes, at that time. Mm -hmm. So he, he ha fortunately he had a copy of the Bangalore Temple. Mm -hmm. He immediately stood up, showed the Bangalore Temple, uh, uh, you know, picture, and he asked the judges, "My Lord." You please tell me if there is a buyer who will buy this temple. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in India, nobody can buy a temple, temple. nobody can sell a temple. temple. So the judges also started laughing. So, yeah. you know, the matter fizzled out there. Yeah. So, you know, they were trying all these kind of tricks to yeah. take over the temple, but it was not really working. You know, Krishna's yeah. and Prabhupada's protection was always there upon us. So, <clears throat> so finally, the court, the court also got a hang that there is some, you know, philosophical debate. It's not really philosophical difference. It's not really a property issue like that. So they said, why don't you mediate? Mm. Mediation means there is a court appointed uh, retired judge or somebody like that and uh, both the parties sit and mm. uh, they put their demands on the table, what you want. Mm. So they appointed a retired Supreme Court Justice, Justice uh, I think Ravindran. Yeah. So he was the mediator and uh, I think there was one more person also, two people were there and uh, one side from their side, some few people. And from our side, a few devotees, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, Chanchala Pati Prabhu, Jai Chaitanya Prabhu, or whoever, you know, few of our devotees representing our side. So first, they put their demand. <coughs> they put their demand that Bangalore temple has to be handed over to them. Second demand, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, Chanchala Pati Prabhu and Jai Chaitanya Prabhu should not stay in Bangalore temple. They should move out of Bangalore temple. And uh, the, if this is done, then they are okay with okay. this. This was their, their demand. demand. So now what, uh, so Madhu Pandit Prabhu came back and we, he discussed with the mm. entire GBC body and the temple presidents and all that. And then we together decided that we'll, we will put a counter offer. We have to also mm. place our demand. So we said, you want Bangalore temple. We will give you Bangalore temple, Vrindavan Visiyam temple, Jaipur temple, Ahmedabad temple. We gave a full list, Mysore, Hubli, mm. etc. You know, full list we gave. All the temples, you are asking one temple, we will hand over all these things. In return, what we want is, and your condition that Madhu Pandit Prabhu, Jai Chaitanya Prabhu, Sanchalapati Prabhu would not stay in Bangalore, that also we are ready to accept. Mm -hmm. Actually, when this proposal came, we were all dead against it. We mm -hmm. said, no, no, why, why should MPP, CPP and, uh, and Jai Chaitanya Prabhu go out of the temple? They, as if they have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. So, why should you go? Mm -hmm. But Madhu Pandit Prabhu was saying, no, no, let us accept that because if they are ready for this, then this is a small sacrifice to bring Prabhupada mm -hmm. back into the center of the institution. So, finally, we also, you know, respecting his uh, wish and we also felt that, okay, mm. this is a greater thing to gain, although we were not mm. so happy with mm. that decision, but again, we went and made that offer. We are ready to accept that also. MP uh, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, Chanchalapati Prabhu, Jai Chaitanya Prabhu will, will not remain in Bangalore, uh, HK Hill. Uh, Madhu Pandit Prabhu can go to uh, uh, Vaikuntha Hill, Jai Chaitanya Prabhu can go to Mysore, and uh, Ch Chanchalapati Prabhu can go to VCM. Mm. That way we will not remain in uh, Bangalore temple and they can appoint their own president. This also we are ready to accept and hand over all the rest of the properties also. And our only request is that it should be recorded in the Supreme Court that in all our group temples only Prabhupada will be the Diksha Guru. Mm. There will be no other uh, Diksha Guru in our temples. And the July 9th Ritwik system will, will be in force in all these temples. Mm -hmm. It should be a Supreme Court recognized order. Mm -hmm. If you are accepting for this, we are ready to accept anything. Mm -hmm. What was the response bro? So, as a response, what they did was, they formed a committee of two devotees. One was Dharam Prabhu, another was, uh, I forget the name of the devotee. 
uh, two, two temple presidents from their side. They came and visited all our properties. They wanted to see, you know, he has given a big list. What is this list? Is it some simply, mm. you know, some uh, numbers thrown to just does it actually exist? Track? Mm. Does it actually exist? Mm. So they came and visited all our temples. <clears throat> they came to Vrindavan. They saw everything, and they uh, they saw the big project coming up, and they they asked us, uh, you know, is Bangalore funding all this? We said no. Bangalore Temple is not giving anything. We are, you know, raising all the funds locally, and we are doing it. They were surprised. Then we took them to Jaipur. So I personally accompanied them to Jaipur. So on the way to Jaipur, I told them we have a small temple in Jaipur. We have we have plans to come up with a big temple there. And then we took them and uh, we took them to the temple hall. They were shocked. Mm. They said, uh, you said small temple. Mm. You know, this is a big temple. <laughs> when you said small temple, we thought some small room, some house, something mm. is going on. This is big temple. And they saw all the, you know, uh, 50, 60 odd mm. brahmacharis mm. there. They were zapped. Mm. They said, this is something else. Mm. So like that, they went from temple to temple. Mm. They finally saw that this list is not, a, not an ordinary list. Mm. There are real temples, real mm. devotees, you know, it's a, it's a vibrant institution. Mm. So they were really taken aback mm. and they could see that Madhu Pandit Prabhu's offer, our offer was a genuine offer mm. to hand over everything. <clears throat> so, so what, uh, what happened was, they, 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 this, these two devotees were from the ISKCON Bureau. They have a body called ISKCON Bureau, which is a body of all the temple presidents in India. In India. So they felt, okay, you know, they also felt, you know, this fighting between the two groups within ISKCON is damaging the preaching movement in the whole of India. And what uh, demand we are making is very reasonable. Mm. If uh, we are not going to disturb them and they are not going to disturb us, why don't we live in harmony? Live and let live. So mm. they put the proposal to the GBC, mm. saying that, uh, you know, this is something which we can accept. They were for it. <coughs> May not be by unanimity, mm. but at least majority, majority of them were for it. So mm. they put it forward. So IB put it across to GBC. Mm. GBC. So now the GBC, sent us a letter. So, before doing this, they had already tried a couple of times to send a message to Madhu Pandit Prabhu. Mm. Once it so happened that one very prominent industrialist and uh, a very big donor of our Bangalore temple, he came and met Madhu Pandit Prabhu. And he said, I have found a solution to stop all this fighting between the two of you. Mm. Madhu Pandit Prabhu said, yes, you know, if mm. something can mm. stop it, very good, please come and share. So, he came to Madhu Pandit Prabhu and said, I spoke to the other group. And they have said that you can become the guru and in the, all the devotees in Bangalore temple will become your disciples. Matter is over, no. Madhu Pandit Prabhu was like, oh my God. <laughs> then he sat with him for two, three hours and explained the whole guru issue to him. Finally, that industrialist folded his hands and he said, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, I am sorry I brought this proposal to you. My apologies. <laughs> and he went back. So already they had tried. Mm -hmm. So they understood that Madhu Pandit Prabhu is not going to fall for this trap because mm -hmm. This is something which they have used earlier also. Mm. In 1978, when they declared these 11 people as the zonal acharyas, then in about 85, 86, there was this whole mm. group of devotees led by Ravindra Swarup mm. Prabhu who rose in rebellion against this system. Mm. And they said, they, were, they also uh, explained how Prabhupada never wanted this system, mm. nobody can be guru and all those kind of things. So when this rebellion came up, they called all the leaders of that rebellion and told them, you also become gurus. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the rebellion was closed. closed. Mm. So, that's mm. a system that they have followed. Mm. Either ban the person and throw him out, mm. or you give him the carrot of the, mm. uh, of mm. the uh, guruship. Mm. Uh, you know, either danda, mm. or uh, you give him uh, sama. Mm. You give him uh, mm. something mm. in benefit, and uh, he, will, he will become quiet. Mm. So, they tried it with Madhubandi mm. Prabhu, it didn't happen. Mm. So, now the GBC, they heard the whole ID, and they sent us a proposal. So they said, we have gone through your proposal, we have uh, understood your proposal, etc., etc., addressing all the temple presidents of our group. We were in our temple president body, at that time we were about, I think, 21 or 22 devotees. So I remember this was in Bilai, mm. as far as my recollection goes, I may be wrong. In Bilai, we had a temple president at GBC meeting. There we got this proposal from the GBC. And we read it out, the whole group, all of us read it out. I don't remember the exact contents, mm -hmm. but I can tell you the gist, the gist of, of it. it. Mm -hmm. So they said, we have gone through your proposal. Uh, this uh, Ritwik system is unacceptable to us. Mm -hmm. It is a bogus philosophy. We cannot, blah, blah, all those kind of Outrightly things. rejected that offer. Outri outrightly rejected. Mm -hmm. But what we can offer to you is, in your group, you choose a few of your senior devotees and whomever you recommend, we will approve as regular gurus and the matter can be solved. In the same thing. Not the same thing. Uh. They were now trying Veda. 
Okay. They were thinking, if, 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 Madhu Pandit Prabhu did not agree. Others may accept. We will give the carrot to this, uh, to this whole group. Uh -huh. Few of them will jump the ship. Uh -huh. The uh, group break will get, the, the unity will be broken. broken. Uh -huh. We saw through their game. Uh -huh. And uh, some of us were livid. Uh -huh. We were beyond, uh, you know, beyond even rage. Uh -huh. you know, how can they even think of, <laughs> you know, what do they think about us? Uh -huh. So, we immediately sat there and uh, we, uh, you know, wrote down a full reply to the GBC. And uh, we said words to the effect that we cannot in our, even in our dreams mm -hmm. think of becoming a guru. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, we wrote the whole thing. And all 21 or 22 of us signed on this mm -hmm. letter. To show that we are united, there is no mm -hmm. question of even a you know, iota of desire in our heart that maybe we can, we can jump over. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that issue closes. So, we made that letter and sent it back. So, this was in the knowledge of the Ch Chief Justice? This was, uh, I think it would have been shared with the, you know, with the, because uh, the mediation committee uh, was also there. Yeah. So finally, the, we went back to the mediation uh, committee also and we told them that uh, we have offered everything. They are not ready to accept mm. that this, uh, they will accept Prabhupada as the guru. Mm. So the mediation failed. So very clearly for the mediation that uh, the j uh, ex judge who was uh, heading that mediation, that uh, heading the mediation uh, uh, attempt, mm. as well as the Supreme Court judges, it is very clear to them that this issue is not a property issue, mm -hmm. it is simply that they do not want to accept Prabhupada as the Guru. Mm -hmm. So, it became very clear to them. So, you know, so mm -hmm. that's how things have been going on. Uh, I just remembered when I was in the final year of engineering in mm -hmm. my college, University of Vishwashtra College of Engineering, mm -hmm. I used to get uh, juniors to the temple mm -hmm. and I heard this weird uh, thing about the temple mm -hmm. that if you go to the temple, they'll take your kidney off and they'll have <laughs> do something. What's the whole uh, conspiracy theory about kidneys? And oh, yes. Mm. I do remember that. Uh, there was one uh, tabloid in Bangalore who was uh, propagating that uh, misleading story. Uh, those, you know, uh, th there are some yellow journals who thrive on, uh, uh, on controversial topics mm. without any basis to, to, uh, to, malign. to malign somebody which will, which will sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. So, they used to publish that how uh, when the Bangalore temple was inaugurated, uh, we had a multivision theatre. Mm. Of course, we still have the theatre, but at that time we had a, at that time it was a very modern show. It was a, it was based on robotics. We had got, a, I think, imported equipment from uh, US and all that. Chanchalapati Prabhu had worked extensively with teams from the US and created a robotic show on Ajamila. Mm -hmm. uh, the story of Ajamila from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, there would be a robot lying on a bed, which would be, you know, having a beard and all that, which, which was Ajamila. And uh, this, would, uh, this would come up from below the floor. Mm. And then, from the sides, there would be these huge black dolls, mm. which would come forward mm. and uh, try to approach Ajamila and take him away. They Amadutas, were like yeah. the Yamadutas. Mm. And when they would come forward mm. to give effects, mm. there would be those, uh, uh, those smoke, smokes, smoke the smoke, mm -hmm. uh, this one, that uh, machines, which would throw forth smoke and all that and create that mm. kind of, uh, mm. uh, that kind of uh, fearful uh, presence of the Yamadutha. So, it was an interesting show. And then going from there, there was a, there was a, a screen uh, on which a video would be projected about how this universe is there and how we are not the body, we are mm. spirit soul mm. and all based on the Bhagavad Gita and the teachings of Prabhupada. So, when the temple got inaugurated, the MVT also, we started the, uh, from the temple trying to popularize, uh, popularize it and uh, whoever would come to the temple, we would sell tickets, people would come, watch the show mm -hmm. and then encourage people to chant and all. That's how the MVT was functioning mm -hmm. those days. Now, this uh, yellow journal wanted, uh, now Bangalore temple, Hare Krishna Hill temple had become a uh, uh, household topic in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. A huge temple inaugurated by the then president of India, Shankar Dayal Sarma. It had made a lot of news. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody, it had become the, it had become one of the tourist mm. spots. Everybody, thousands of people were coming. So, some guy in some yellow uh, journal, he got this bright idea. Let us malign these people and make mm. some, make a fast buck out of it and we can sell a lot of mm. copies of uh, his paper, which mm. otherwise was a nondescript paper. Not even, mm. we had not even heard mm. that paper's name until they brought out <laughs> this, this kind of uh, mm. uh, scandalous uh, mm. uh, things which were, which were not facts. So, they, he started publishing uh, a story after story how if you, there is an MVT which is very dark, 
and uh, they <laughs> sell you tickets and you go and sit inside there will be smoke and suddenly your chair will go into the floor and then you lose consciousness and when you come out finally the show is over you go home you'll find that your kidney is missing <laughs> what a story my goodness uh, we were like you know one one side you know i used to be a uh, 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 i used to i used to be i i was a kind of congregation devotee mm -hmm. at that time i was uh, chanting 16 malas mm -hmm. and all that i would come to the temple on weekends and all that i had not yet joined the mm -hmm. temple but i was mm -hmm. practicing krishna consciousness fully and when we would hear, when we heard all this we were like laughing you know what is Obviously. this kind of joke mm -hmm. but for the general public, public. Mm. it created a different impression mm. people started talking mm. what is this mm. when i would go to office the um, all my colleagues would come and ask me what is this we heard there mm. is some kidney racket going on in iskan and i would be are baba mm. you do one thing this weekend mm. you know i will uh, sponsor so your ticket you, you come, come with me i will show you the show <laughs> <laughs> then you decide for yourself whether your kidney is there or not <laughs> so most of the people whom i spoke to the confidence with which i spoke they were convinced, convinced okay. but general mass of mm. people mm. you know they, they were they were really uh, taken for a ride and uh, one time we even had to take out a protest rally mm. i put leave to my office mm. many other congregation devotees also put leave to their office uh, some boys took leave from their mm. college we took a march from uh, one portion of uh, bangalore till the commissioner's office mm. and we went and gave a petition stating that mm. uh, complaints sta mm. uh, stating that this man is uh, unnecessarily spoiling our reputation mm. so uh, for a few days it ran like that mm. But after some time, people also realized that it was all, you know. Because I got to know it in 2007 when I was pursuing my engineering. Just imagine, 10 years. Yeah. So for that long, it has persisted. Mm. But eventually, mm. people yes. understood that it's all, you know, stories and there is no value. Mm. Maybe some mm. uneducated people, mm. illiterate people, they might still be propagating that rumor. Mm. But otherwise, mm. uh, for a short period of time, mm. it really had a very negative impact mm. on the temple and the image of the temple. But eventually, mm. truth prevailed. So after your stint, small stint in four or five years in Bangalore, mm. you were moved to uh, Vrindavan. Yes. Before that, you were handling the uh, Krishna Leela theme park in Bangalore, VK Hill. For a very short, short period, period of time. time. You went to Vrindavan for a month or so. It ended up spending years together. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> so actually, uh, uh, after I joined the temple in 1999, uh, then uh, somehow in 2001, I, I was uh, given more additional responsibilities. I started handling the guest house. I was uh, overseeing the donor care department in Bangalore uh, temple and uh, some little bit of the facilities also, maintenance also, all those kind of things. And then uh, in 2005, we decided to launch the Gokulam project. Mm -hmm. So, the Gokulam project was the precursor to the whole theme yes, park, theme park on yeah. the, and the uh, Krishna Leela theme park which is coming up on Vaikuntha Hill. So, during the launch of that project, I was involved. Some initial planning of where the Gokulam towers mm -hmm. has to come up, where our offices have to come up and all those kind of things. In the middle of that, one fine day, Vyompad Prabhu landed up mm -hmm. from uh, Vrindavan mm -hmm. and uh, he had a meeting with uh, Chanchalapati Prabhu. And uh, I was involved a little bit in setting up of that uh, Taurus and Dome mm. in uh, Vrindavan because uh, the company which was uh, doing that uh, project of uh, building the Dome and Taurus was based out of Bangalore. Mm. So, some coordination here mm. with the Bangalore, uh, with their Bangalore team I used to do and uh, coordinate with Vyompath Prabhu. Most of the things, 90% of the things were handled by Vyompath Prabhu, but little bit 10% mm. here and there I used to do some documentation and those kind of stuff. So, this uh, so that much only mm. I was aware. I had no idea of what was going on there. And uh, suddenly one day Vyompath Prabhu landed up and he had a discussion with Chanchalapati Prabhu about how this dome and Taurus was uh, nearing completion but neither here nor there and he wanted somebody who would mm. sit there and, and finish all mm. the things and mm. make the Akshay Patra kitchen functional within that uh, mm. uh, Taurus. Mm. So, because the project had been going on for several months and uh, they were operating out of a very small shed the Akshay Patra, Akshay Patra kitchen yes. feeding about 1000-1500 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. children and they wanted to expand, there was a lot mm -hmm. of pressure mm -hmm. from the administration, a lot of demand from the children, parents, everywhere and they were not able to expand because they were mm -hmm. not able to shift into the, into the uh, Taurus mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the shifting the kitchen into the place which uh, was planned that we would be able to feed about 25-30,000 children from there, that was the plan. So, uh, Vyompath Prabhu and uh, Chitrang Prabhu had gone to Punjab they had identified one vendor who would make a rotary machine. machine. They had visited yeah. the, mm. uh, the, the, uh, the Amritsar, Amritsar temple, mm. where they had a mm. big temple, mm. a big kitchen, where they had a similar kind of uh, machine. 
So they had uh, uh, got a, uh, ordered a machine which would make 10,000 rotis an hour and it was the first mm. roti machine in our uh, uh, Akshay Patra kitchens, one of, in, in our Akshay Patra kitchens. And uh, so they had brought that uh, uh, roti machine and installed it in the torus although it was not functional. Mm. So still the, uh, uh, the rice cooking and other mm. things had to be, had to rice, dal, all had to get shifted. That was not happening. And uh, Vyompath Prabhu was one person, mm. how much he, uh, one person will do. And uh, our campus at that point of time, uh, where it was situated, uh, four kilometers from Vrindavan, mm. it was in the middle of wilderness. Mm. Uh, nobody would come to that place after 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Uh, today, what you are seeing is a mm. four-lane mm. road from Chetikara to, 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 to the uh, to Prem Mandir. Mandir. Mm. And uh, we are also having uh, wonderful street lights and mm. all that. Those days, there were no street lights. Mm. After 6 p.m., nobody would dare to come to that mm. place. It was like, you know, mm. people would be afraid to come there. Mm. I remember once uh, Vyompath Prabhu had gone to Delhi and he had come back. Yeah, he was evening supposed to come, come to that because Atiks and Ahmeds and Qureshis are killed <laughs> now. Those days were their full throttle. They were, that is yeah, their yeah, Raj. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Vyompath Prabhu had come in a cab mm -hmm. to, from Delhi on the way to, uh, to uh, Kesha of Kunj, opposite mm -hmm. the Krishna mm -hmm. temple, which is where mm -hmm. we, all, we all were staying. Mm -hmm. Vyompath Prabhu and uh, Mataji and mm -hmm. uh, myself and another devotee, mm -hmm. we were all living in a in a 1 BHK mm. uh, flat, we used to live in Keshav Kunj. So, he was coming back in the cab and he stopped at our campus to keep something and take something or mm. some, this one uh, small work he had. So, for about 10 minutes he went inside and this guy was waiting outside the gate. By the time Vyompath Prabhu came back, this driver, cab driver was sweating and he was mm. like, Prabhuji, mm. <laughs> 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 you know, he was to share this experience. People were scared to come there in the, in the you, night. You had an encounter with decoits who were threatened to kill you. What uh, was not that? Not really, not really. <laughs> I'll come to that. <laughs> so, you know, that it, it, was, it was a very remote uh, location mm. at that point of time. So, you can imagine in that location mm. to get people to work, mm. to, to, you know, to, mm. to, uh, to uh, do all the uh, finishes of the construction work and get the place up and running, it was a big challenge. So that's where I was mm. coming from. Vyampath Prabhu was facing some challenges. So he spoke to Chanchalapati Prabhu because I had some little bit of exposure to maintenance and other things in mm. the Bangalore temple. He said, can he come for a little period of uh, three to four weeks and uh, he can uh, make the kitchen functional and he can come back. Mm. So Chanchalapati Prabhu spoke to Madhupandi Prabhu also. Madhupandi Prabhu said, okay, we are doing the Bhumi Puja now for the for mm. that uh, uh, tower gokulam flats mm. so if uh, i go from here then who will oversee mm. the project then madhupandi prabhu also spoke to me and he said you continue to remain in touch over phone and uh, you manage that for after all it's a matter of only 3 weeks so you manage over phone and come back and continue that was the understanding mm. so i said okay mm. so then uh, uh, going for 3 weeks i took 3 sets of uh, dresses, dresses and uh, that was it nothing else mm. and i had uh, i think i had a laptop i'm not sure mm. Or the laptop came later, I think. Mm. And uh, we had those very basic... Uh, uh, mobile Reliance phones. mobiles. Uh, yeah, no, those no, Reliance no. mobiles, 500 rupees mm. uh, stuff. And uh, so, took that and uh, hopped down to the flight. Mm. I did not have my wallet. I did not have one rupee with me. Mm. Vyambath Prabhu is there. He's taking care of everything. You know, what do I have to take? You know, just one small bag of three sets of clothes and hopped down to the mm. flight and uh, landed up in uh, Vrindavan. And uh, so, that was how it started. Then I came, sat there. And uh, for about, I think, uh, four weeks or something, we managed to bring it to some little shape in, a, in order to be able to shift the kitchen and make it operationalized. To op we operationalized the kitchen. Then the question came up that some more facilities are required. We have to build an ashram. We have to build, a, you know, the, the, the devotees will have to stay here. They'll need a small personal temple, at least for their sadhana. Mm -hmm. Public may not come, mm -hmm. but at least for the devotees in the mm -hmm. dome, we should have a small temple. And uh, like that, the mm -hmm. discussion started. So, uh, see, people said, okay, another six months, you continue and finish this. <laughs> so, three months became six months, so, became one year, it became, finally became 13 years. Yeah. So, Krishna's, uh, Radharani's uh, Kripa, you know, they, they, yeah. they, uh, they uh, chose to mm. give me the fortune of staying in Vandavan Dham and serving their lordships. But what started as a small temple meant for mm. the temple devotees. Uh, it uh, it uh, morphed into a very, uh, uh, very popular public temple. Mm. It was unexpected. We never expected mm. that public will come. Okay. When in 2006, we inaugurated the current, uh, you know, the, the old temple, temple the yeah. mm. temple in the Dome and Taurus, mm. uh, on uh, the, in the whole week, uh, we would probably get about one family coming to the temple. Mm. 
and uh, the day a family comes to the temple there will be celebration inside the ashram <laughs> oh today one family <laughs> came that in vrindavan that in vrindavan and uh, slowly slowly word spread people came to know people started coming in droves and finally you know mm. such a wonderful project has taken shape so you know the, the uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, people wouldn't come at that time was like i mentioned it mm. was on the outskirts mm. evenings would be very pretty dark and uh, risky also mm. there was one instance where uh, one day wa- one of our drivers mm. uh, he we had come back from uh, delhi vyompath prabhu and i and he dropped us at keshav kunj then he went back to the akshay patra uh, to, uh, sorry to to the uh, vcm campus mm. and he dropped the car there and then he came back to vrindavan so it was about 8 o'clock in the night he was waylaid by four or five people whatever a little 100 200 rupees he had was taken away beaten up badly fortunately he was not killed mm. so that was the kind of uh, risky uh, scenario that was there and uh, we had one security guard at the at the at the uh, campus with the gun with a gun mm. with a gun in the night mm. there was one time when dacoits came and attacked and uh, these people fired but they uh, dacoits outnumbered the number of guards here mm. so the guards ran away mm. and these people broke open the locks ransacked the office admin mm. office mm. that we had at that time admin office at that mm. time was a small 10 feet by 10 feet room mm. and we had a you know one or two computers mm. and some mm. files and all that they had you know they had opened up everything thrown everything around there was no cash and mm. all that thing so those kind of things are were quite common those days mm. but uh, with time what happened was the infrastructure also improved that uh, two lane simple two lane road became a four lane mm. road street lights came mm. other uh, campuses came up mm. during that time in 2000 from 2006 till about maybe 2008 2010 uh, when you come from chatikara towards vrindavan first uh, building you will find is ours yes after that the next building you will find is saraf hospital mm. after that it is chitrakuta ashram mm. nothing else nothing was else there was the, mm. it, it was completely you know mm. it was all uh, trees and bushes and all mm. this kind of stuff so it was a prime place for all this kind of uh, uh, anti social mm. elements mm. to to grow around mm. and uh, now of course mm. many many uh, uh, projects have come up so many buildings have come up chaitanya vihara has come up rukmini vihara has come up so the whole mm. place is developed and taken on a different uh, mm. Okay, you know mm. see uh, scenario all together mm. pro now what were the challenges for vcm because you need to funds you need the <coughs> land to procure, to be procured and there was still in procurement of land the center chunk, chunk of land and the design challenges now the third or the fourth design so can you just briefly go through this uh, experience which you went through so that we can also get a gist of what you went through yeah so uh, when i went to vrindavan in uh, 2005 i think we had about maybe about 10 or 15 acres of land that was what mm. all the land that we had and that time the thinking was this uh, piece of land we will eventually build one uh, small hospice or a retirement uh, kind of place mm. where brahmacharis in their old days they can mm-hmm. come and settle mm-hmm. here and leave their bodies you know that was the kind There's of never plan for a big there was temple. never plan mm. for any big project mm. or anything like that but uh, uh, somehow we kept buying land little by little little by little one acre here there one acre there two acres there some offer would come and we would keep buying 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 that became 40 50 acres mm. so then uh, uh, as i recollect what madhu pandit prabhu told me was that uh, madhu pandit prabhu started thinking you know if radharani has blessed it with mm. so much land in vandavan mm. there must be some higher plan mm. and that's how the thinking started maybe we should do a big project here and finally the idea came up that uh, vrindavan is the holy land of krishna the stature of krishna's philosophy mm. is so high so we must have the tallest temple for krishna in the whole world mm-hmm. and that is how the idea of a skyscraper temple, temple was born so uh, of course uh, buying land in uh, vrindavan is not easy uh, there are many challenges legal hurdles uh, the the uh, the culture there the there are so many land mafias and and mm. uh, these kind of you know very strong uh, uh, elements that are there which you have to work against Uh, local uh, politicians uh, all all sorts of uh, mm. uh, people you will have there but against all the odds somehow by krishna's mercy uh, everything got uh, uh, mm. resolved as uh, time went by there was uh, one particular piece of land which was you know which had caused a restriction in our land mm. there was a neck which was created which was very narrow mm. which was probably about uh, 20 30 feet in width mm. so for us 
to build a big project mm. where the current temple is coming up to access that we need a wider uh, road mm. so for that we had to get, uh, acquire another piece of land mm. which would make the mm. neck broader mm. so that is where you know where uh, if you look at our whole land um, when uh, we enter our mm. land it's a little broader mm. ah, it is quite broad mm. but then it narrows, narrows down, down and then again, then again widens yeah. out so, so spot. that mm. spot was much much, much it was narrow. actually mm. half that width mm. So you can imagine, you know, mm. it, it would have been practically impractical mm. to have a big project with mm. such a neck. So there was one devotee, Dindayal Chaitanya Prabhu, mm. who was, uh, uh, who is a Brahmachari, I think he is in Jaipur, Jaipur now. Yeah. He was in Vrindavan at that time. He somehow managed to uh, fi find out who is the owner of that land. Mm. So he went, spoke to him. I also met him, spoke to him. He had a certain demand for the land price, which was far, far higher than the market Mark price. price. Mm. But then you know mm. we were stuck we had no other choice so we agreed for that price so x price he quoted after some negotiation we said okay we'll give you x price so let us do the sale registration so he would say okay we'll do it next week after one week we go back to him and tell him shall we uh, go ahead with the registration he will turn no my price has now become x plus something so he would increase the price. Because we have already announced the project, so he's encashing on it. We had not yet announced the project yet. Okay, even but he knew that uh, we were acquiring land and this is important for, uh, him, for us. That's why we are going to him. Uh, and he is not wanting to sell. We are going and asking him to uh, sell. No? So then uh, we, we, after uh, you know discussing with him and telling, no, you agreed for this, that and all those kind of things. Okay, Baba, uh, we are ready for this. Uh, after two days, he will say, no, my price has increased. So, four, three times, four times, five times this happened. Mm. And uh, this fellow is taking us for a ride. So, then uh, Dindayal Prabhu find, found one uh, elderly person in Vandavan who was like his kind of guru kind of person. Mm. We went and spoke to him. He called that man, he spoke to him. But he was, that uh, elderly person was not so much in our favor. Mm. So, that also did not work out. Then Dindayal Prabhu went and met this man's father. And he told him, like this, he is doing what is, we have agreed for uh, price. Whatever you are asking, then uh, you know mm -hmm. wow, you should not do this. Then the father called uh, that man and he fired him left, right, and mm -hmm. center. He used all filthy mm -hmm. words and <laughs> scolded him. Rajkali. And that man, okay, okay, <laughs> I'll do the registration. <laughs> and uh, so finally, a date was fixed. So Dindayal Prabhu went to his home. I had uh, uh, done all the legal work and uh, arranged the advocate and mm -hmm. you know at the at the registrar's office and all that. And uh, Dindayal Prabhu went to his home. And then Dindayal Prabhu calls me from there. Prabhu, now he is refusing. He says he wants more. I was like, oh my God, what is this? Mm -hmm. So I said, what to do now? You speak to his father, try to do something. Then he went and uh, spoke to his father. His father called him and again fired him. But he was saying, no, I want more. Mm -hmm. And uh, Deen Dayal Prabhu literally fell at his feet mm -hmm. and caught hold of his feet and said, please, mm -hmm. you know, don't uh, do this. You know, you have done this enough number mm -hmm. of times. Finally, that man agreed. Mm -hmm. Somehow, Yogamaya worked on him. He came and he signed the papers, took the money and went. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, he is telling, I don't know how I sold that land. <laughs> Krishna. Huh. I am going to put a case in court and take back my land. Uh -huh. And all that. He said, you know, we, we, you know, you do go do whatever you want. Mm. You know, we are not going to talk to you anymore. Mm. You can do whatever you want because everything is done legally and we have paid much, much more than the market price. There is no way any court will entertain you. So, then that man also so left it Such up. things when it happens, you, know, you can clearly see the hand of the Lord and especially Srimadhi Radha. Definitely. Without their, without their intervention, mm. without Krishna's inspiration, that man would never have uh, sold the land to us. Mm. So, like this, you know, and, uh, and uh, uh, there was a point of time when we had acquired a good chunk of land, about 40-50 acres of land. But the central portion where the temple mm. is going to come up, that was not with us. Mm. So, we had to buy that land. Those people were ready to sell the land also. But we ran, ran out of funds. Mm. So what to do now? So we approached uh, many builders in mm. uh, Delhi. Uh, all the big, big names. Opals, mm. Ansals, Parshwanath. Uh, you know, like that. Mm. All the big builders in Delhi, we went and met them. And uh, Chanchalapati Prabhu would come and uh, he would uh, explain the whole mm. project to them and tell them, you know, if, if, can you help us with uh, investing in this mm. project? And we can discuss some terms by which you get back your mm. money and all that. And uh, the kind of responses we used to get, one man looked at the whole project, heard the whole story, then he said, he, he picked up that uh, our, we had a, mm. you know, print out of the mm. whole project mm. and all that. He said, Swamiji, you know what is this? This is just a dream. Mm. This will never become a reality. You take it from me. And he threw the piece of paper on the, on the table. Mm. So, you know, but uh, Chanchalapati Prabhu never gave up hope. He never was, uh, he, he never was, uh, 
uh, you know, no negative this one mm. from me. He was always, uh, his enthusiasm was high. Mm. We would go to, then we went to another, uh, uh, you know, prospecting mm. investor. There also Prabhu would continue with the same enthusiasm, same <laughs> energy. You know, he never uh, lost hope. Mm. Because after all, our dependence, dependence is on Krishna, mm. not on these people. Mm. Another person we met, he, he heard the whole thing. He said, Swamiji, you know what? Your whole land is going to be taken away by the government. Your project will never see the light of the day. Oh, oh. You know, these are the kind of responses we used to get. But Prabhu would never be, he would never, he would never lose hope. He would never lose his enthusiasm. We went, met people after people after people. Finally, one, one very prominent uh, realtor in, uh, in Delhi agreed. And he gave a check also, gave some amount of money. With that money, we bought uh, the additional lands also. Of course, it was not enough to buy the central portion of land. But some more surrounding lands we bought. But by, by, uh, after a few months, what happened was there was a collapse, economic collapse. The mm. real estate market went mm. down. So that man developed cold feet. Mm. And he said, no, I want to exit. Mm. I don't want to continue with the project. You have to pay so him back now. We have to pay him back now. But where is the money? We have already oh, bought land with that. So then we had to again repeat the whole thing, run around for some other builders. Some other builders and finally, you know, uh, uh, mm. Ravindra Chamadiyaji, Chamadi, he mm. came forward and and he repaid that man's money mm. and he also helped us buy the central mm. piece of land and then uh, the rest of the land got consolidated then we got our approvals also and all the fears that were expressed by different builders all that uh, you know never the approvals for such a tallest temple mathura vrindavan development authority yes. would not give right because they don't have the technical capability to screw so yeah so what uh, the primary problem with them was that the fire NOC mm -hmm. had to be obtained. Mm -hmm. As far as Mathura Vrindavan Development Authority was concerned, they had no bylaws which, mm -hmm. which uh, prevented any building to be built higher than mm -hmm. the, a certain level. Mm -hmm. So they had no restriction on the height. So they said you get fire NOC and you get uh, the, the, the airport authority clearance. Mm -hmm. These are the two mm -hmm. things for uh, height. If you get these, we, will, we, will, we have no issue. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we approached the airport authority of India. When we approached the airport authority of India, they said, the closest airport for you is Agra. Mm. And Agra is a defense airport. Mm. So you have to go to the defense Defensive. authority. Mm. They have to give you the clearance. So then we went to the defense uh, authority. And fortunately at that time, uh, somehow for only for six months, one person who was a retired IAF uh, uh, Indian Air Force uh, uh, pilot or something mm. like that. He had worked in the Indian Air Force. I don't know whether he was a pilot or not, mm. but he had worked mm. in the Indian Air Force. He had joined us for six months mm. as a, as as you know, as mm. an administrative uh, officer, and uh, he had his uh, some people he knew in the defense mm. uh, naturally, mm, and so he worked on it and he got the NOC for oh, us. Yes. Mm. And after that, uh, then uh, he also left the job and went. Uh -huh. I don't know. I've never Lord met him afterwards. So it was you know, the <laughs> Lord sent him at the right time, and then uh, we had to get the fire NOC. So we went to the fire authority in Mathura. Mm. So that guy, when he saw the whole thing, he was like, you know, he couldn't make head or tails of mm. what this oh, is. Such this a is far project. beyond this, mm. uh, this one. So he said, let us take it to Agra. Uh. So Agra is the head office. So we went to Agra. Agra there, when we presented this, uh, he said, you see, I cannot take a decision on this myself. Even it is even beyond mm. me. It has to go to Lucknow. Mm. So we went to Lucknow and there was a special committee mm. in front of whom there were about, I think, 15 or 20 people. And uh, our uh, consultant at that time was AECOM. They had come, the, an official from there had come. And he had made a beautiful presentation of the whole strategy, how to address the fire uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some things which we were uh, meeting, some things which we wanted to explain by the strategy, how we may not meet the exact norms, but we will be able to manage the spirit of what was uh, mm -hmm. this one. So they saw through the whole thing and they, they, they cleared it one shot. Mm -hmm. In only one meeting, they cleared it. Mm -hmm. Very astounding. This mm -hmm. is all uh, Krishna's, mm -hmm. uh, this one. And uh, then what happened was, we also had to get an environment clearance. Mm -hmm. So it was a very important thing because mm -hmm. such a huge mammoth project spread over so many and acres of land. flowing nearby. Yamuna is mm -hmm. about uh, mm -hmm. five, six mm -hmm. kilometers mm -hmm. from our place. So we had to develop, a, we had to do a whole study of uh, six months mm. about the, it, was, it is called an impact assessment study. Mm. So that impact assessment study was done. And uh, what happened was when we had to do this environment uh, clearance, we did not know how to go about this mm. because this is a very mm. intricate subject matter. So it so happened that one day to our Vrindavan temple, one elderly gentleman came and uh, we, you know, naturally we received him well and spoke to him and all that. We figured out 
that he is the director of the environment directorate oh, oh. <laughs> so it's clearly evident that shrimati radhani is personally blessing our project absolutely absolutely yeah. so that we explained to him, you know we want to we want the environment clearance how to go about it mm. he said somebody very simple first thing is you get an impact assessment done mm. so we said how to do that mm. he said i know some people in uh, good people in uh, lucknow who uh, who are consultants and who do this you get it done through them and he spoke to them we went and met them they did the study after that we, you know we put the application and uh, he spoke to all the members and then we went to the uh, uh, to the to the environment directorate our consultant was there he had uh, done all the study he made all the presentation there are about 10 15 members from different walks of uh, life they are all on the board mm. so we gave we gave prasadam to all of them <laughs> and they were all very happy oh one sadhu has come from vrindavan this project is coming up we are all very happy and all of them immediately one shot one they gave shot. the approval oppa <laughs> <laughs> these are all yeah. these are all unheard of things what about that iit delhi civil department doing something so after all this we went to the mathura vrindavan development authority mm -hmm. and said we have all the notices what, you, what in place, you wanted whatever you wanted now you approve approve so then uh, one of the things in the criterion in the mathura vrindavan development authority is that we have to give a structural design also mm -hmm. of the project now we had engaged the world's number two firm mm -hmm. to do the mm -hmm. structural design of the tower because such an mm -hmm. important uh, tower we cannot take any risks mm -hmm. so uh, the uh, so now Uh, they had done the design so we were confident that they have done a good job uh, now mathura vrindavan development authority they said we don't have the competence mm. to assess whether what they have done yes. is right or not mm. so they said can you get a uh, peer review done mm. by iit delhi mm -hmm. so now iit delhi where we'll go whom will we meet mm. then uh, one of the devotees in delhi we used to do a lot of preaching work in delhi he said uh, sometime back one person had met me from iit delhi he is an iit professor in delhi and he is in the civil engineering department and uh, you know I, why don't we go and talk to him so i said oh wonderful excel let us go and talk to him we went met him and talked to him and he said yes uh, prabhu ji we can do this mm. this is uh, very much part of our uh, departments this one mm. and uh, this is an application small application we had to make some 25000 rupees fee also they mm. put, put before us we paid 25000 that's all that's all and uh, you know the, so the whole concept was given to them and uh, that professor himself he reviewed everything and he gave his inputs and then he had one superior who also put his uh, signature to it and it was done <laughs> all arranged by rather and everything fell in place on its own mm. so we didn't have to struggle too much so these are all wonderful things which so this brings on to me another question where few devotees from the other side they say propad wanted a skyscraper temple in mayapur not in vrindavan vrindavan should be vana Yeah. Vrindavana, not concrete jungles like yeah. you people are b building up. Yeah. How do you answer them? Well, uh, you know uh, there are conversations where you can hear Prabhupada saying that we should have a 330 feet high temple in Mayapur. Hmm. Helicopter should be coming and landing and taking off. You know all those hmm. kind of things are there. That's the basis on which they hmm. say that Prabhupada wanted Oops. something in like that like in Mayapur. Mayapur. so <clears throat> when we uh, when we came up with this concept of uh, a skyscraper temple it's not that we were uh, insensitive to this that vrindavan should be more mm. of forest and all that actually the land where we started this project was a practically barren piece of land mm. it was not possible to grow anything there mm. for kilometers together if you look around mm. that place you wouldn't find any trees mm. in fact in our whole campus there used to be one drumstick tree and one neem tree mm -hmm. that neem tree is still standing near that uh, uh, footwear stand when mm -hmm. we entered that domain mm -hmm. taras yes, yes, yes. that neem tree was one tree, tree. Uh. there was one more uh, drumstick tree uh. and i think later on in some wind or something that mm -hmm. uh, fell and went mm -hmm. off and all that so these were the only true two trees mm -hmm. and even today if you climb to the, up on a, a taller building and look mm -hmm. around apart from our campus if you look around you will find you will not find mm -hmm. even one tree true very rarely you will mm -hmm. find a tree so that land and um, even though farmers were using the land they used to take only one crop of mustard from that land mm -hmm. and that also even today you know in that area you will get a very sparse uh, 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 this one yield of uh, mustard mm -hmm. not enough for any farmer to survive mm -hmm. so it was that kind of land and uh, when we came into the campus we in 2005 we did lot of uh, uh, landscaping and all that we had we had to struggle a lot mm. because uh, the moment you put water the whole earth would become white with mm. salt mm. and the bird and the, all the uh, plants would all burn mm. away they would dry out and they would not grow mm. so we got uh, soil uh, experts they told uh, you know you make a pit with uh, lime and charcoal mm. and so many other things 
and do this, do that. We did a lot of things, mm. but nothing would work. And then in 2006, the temple was inaugurated and Radha Vrindavan Chandra set foot on the land. Mm. The moment Radha Vrindavan Chandra set foot on the land, the whole thing changed. Oh. After that, we didn't do anything. No soil, uh, uh, this one, uh, conservation, nothing we did. Mm. That whole place became green like anything. As Kunti Marani says in the Srimad mm. Bhagavatam first, can, mm. first canto, Vanadri Nadyudan Manto Hedante Tava Vikshitai mm. Krishna, by your glance, all the trees and plants have become are luxuriously growing and, <laughs> and giving a lot of fruits and all that. This is exactly what has happened in that land. Yeah. Now, the reason why this whole place is barren, there is another interesting story to it, which I learnt later. Uh -huh. So, our the land that we are having, uh, where our project is situated, is uh, uh, the border of Chatikara village and Sundrak Bangar village. Mm. Okay, mm. so so we are exactly on that border. Now, this uh, <coughs> if you go to the Chatikara, uh, you know Side. that uh, mm. the highway. If you mm. go to the uh, Delhi Agra mm. highway. You cross that road, you will find it lush green. Mm -hmm. You come to this side, it is all barren. barren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people give all kinds of things. Groundwater is very saline mm -hmm. and, and this and that, all those kind of things they tell. But then, you know, you cross one highway, it is green on one side, on the other side, it is completely uh -huh. barren. You know, how do, how do you explain this? So, one uh, Brajwasi, he told me, Prabhuji, you know, the Sundrak village is the village which was where Kaliya used to live. Hindi mein bolye, bro, ye. So, ye Sundrak jo hai, gaav, ye wahi jaga hai, jahaan par Kaliya raha karta tha. Okay. Yeah. To ye Kaliya harada, jiska varnan Bhagavat Puran mein diya gaya hai, wo Sundrak mein tha. Uh -huh. To aaj bhi jo hai, today, till today, uh -huh. aaj tak wo Kaliya ka jo wish ka jo ek, ek prabhav hai, uh -huh. aaj tak dikai deta. Isli In the Bhagavatam, uh -huh. Bhagavat mein ye varnan diya gaya hai, Bhagavatam it has been explained, kilometers together around Kaliya harada, uh -huh. there would be no tree or plant. Uh -huh. So, that was that, that effect of Kaliya's poison is there even today. And so, but the moment Radha Vrindavan Chandra appeared and uh, immediately Kaliya's effect also so gone. <laughs> Amazing bro. Uh, so, this, this was how, you know, the, the whole place became so green and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. verdant and, mm -hmm. and uh, today when people come to the campus, they look and they say, we have been transported to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, initially we had, we did so many interventions, so many specialists, so many soil mm -hmm. experts we brought, we did so many things, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. After Radha Vrindavan Chandra came, we did not do anything, same land, same earth, same water, everything is same, it has suddenly become luxuriously green. Mm -hmm. So, you cannot, these are not things which you can explain in any other, any other way. So, anyway, so the point is that it is a historical place, it is associated with Krishna's leaders and this place is very barren. So, we chose a place which was outside, well outside Vrindavan. When we started this project, as I explained to you, there was nothing for kilometers mm. together. And after our project, the only next building was in Saraf Hospital, mm. Nandanman, after that mm. Chitrakut Ashram. Mm. Even Prem Mandir was still mm. under construction. Mm. So, we were really on the outskirts of Vrindavan. We were not really inside mm. Vrindavan per se. And uh, uh, we wanted to build an iconic temple for Krishna, which there is, uh, Prabhupada also wanted an iconic temple for Krishna. That's how Prabhupada built the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. Prabhupada could have taken that land and said, no, let us have a forest here. No, mm. Prabhupada built, a, built a, this one big temple there. Mm. Not only Prabhupada, if you look at the Goswamis, mm. when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mm. told the Goswamis to go to Vrindavan, and uh, 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 and reveal the places of Krishna's pastimes. It was forest, and then it was all forest. Mm. What did the Goswamis do? Mm. They built a skyscraper temples, temples. Of, of, at their days. time. Mm. Those days, the Madan Mohanji temple mm. was nothing less than a skyscraper. skyscraper. Mm. Govindji was seven stories seven high, side. no less than a skyscraper. That was also in Vrindavan. All in Vrindavan. Mm. You look at Radharamanji. Mm. You look at all the seven Goswami temples. All were big temples built by the Goswamis. Mm. Because mm. uh, Pro, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's strategy was very, very clear. Mm. He, his strategy was understood very well by the Goswamis. Mm. Establish iconic temples and make the place uh, uh, very popular because Indians, uh, by nature, they, when they go to a pilgrimage place, they want to visit temples. Mm. This is the reality. Mm. So now, all this is, okay, you keep aside mm. all these things. These are all, you know, logic, understanding. Mm. Sometimes we may go wrong mm. with our logic also. So, after we announced the project and we started working on it, there was one Mataji, Krishna mm. Kumari Mataji, who was uh, in, uh, initiated by Prabhupada in 1976 or so. 
she was uh, staying in Vrindavan, uh, close to the Krishna Balaram temple. She had a place of her own. Her husband had passed away. She had uh, done uh, service in Los Angeles temple as a pujari. Her husband mm -hmm. had also done pujari service. They had come and settled in Vrindavan. For many years in Krishna Balaram temple also, she had done pujari service. So, elderly Mataji, and uh, she, she, uh, she had a lot of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, she, she sympathized mm -hmm. with our understanding of the uh, uh, guru system and all that and she was quite supportive of us and she would often on uh, often on come to our temple she would come to our temple for all festivals very supportive very nice mataji um, after a few years what happened is when we started the launch the project also she was very happy to hear all this and then uh, her health mm -hmm. failed and for whatever reason she had to go back to the us mm -hmm. and uh, she went back to the us and then uh, after a few months she came back again to india because she had to settle some mm. documentation, her land was there, it had, mm. she had to sell it off and all those kind of things. So, she came and met me again at that time. Mm -hmm. So, when she came and met me, she told me, in the US, one of her god brothers had uh, fallen sick and he was admitted to the hospital. So, she had gone to meet him. Mm. And uh, when she met him, uh, he was, uh, he was I mean, conscious and all that, just that some, mm -hmm. le, some uh, minor illness was there and he was admitted to the hospital. So, she was talking to him and many things she also told him that uh, uh, Prabhupada, uh, uh, this, this group of uh, Bangalore devotees, they are following this uh, rhythmic system and all that. And they are coming up with a skyscraper uh, temple yeah, in Vrindavan. Mm. So, she told him this. His eyes lit up. Mm. And he said, you know what? Prabhupada told me you should build a skyscraper temple in Vrindavan. Oh, is it? So, she told me this. I was like shocked. I said, what? Is this true? She said, yes, he told me. Then I started researching mm. and uh, I started looking up in the folio Veda base and all that. I found a conversation where this devotee, I forget his name. Gurudas. Ah, uh, Gurudas, I think. Yeah. Mm. So, he uh, is uh, talking to Prabhupada and he had some complaint uh, mm. to Prabhupada that things are not going okay mm. in the Krishna Balaram temple or some, some context mm. like that. So, Prabhupada told, uh, Prabhupada is speaking to him and this is in the memories. Mm. So, Prabhupada is telling him, you know, why are you complaining so much? If you have so much this one, you should build, a, you should stay here in Vandavan, don't think of going out of here. Stay here and build a skyscraper temple, temple for Krishna. Bol, <laughs> bol, so, we may say context mm. is different mm. and all that. Mm. But fact is, it came out of the lotus lips of Prabhupada. Mm. And because it came out of the lotus lips of it Prabhupada, will happen. Krishna made it happen. Mm. This is the reality. Mm. So, devotee, pure devotee, even if he utters something mm. nonchalantly, mm. still Krishna will not allow it to go uh, without fulfilling it. Krishna mm. will make it happen. Mm. So, this is, you know, this was something which was very pleasing mm. to hear that, you know, this, these words have come out of Prabhupada's own uh, lips and so definitely it is, uh, it has the blessings of Prabhupada and Radharani, otherwise such an immense project to come up in Vrindavan, mm. impossible. impossible. It's not possible. Mm. That too in the modern age. Modern age. <laughs> so, 13 years you had spent in Vrindavan, but the last one year was full of challenges with your health. You, you had lost your ability to chant and I heard that you didn't chant for one year because of your uh, one... Partially true. Uh, it's not true that I did not chant. I was chanting. I was uh, continuing to chant by Krishna's mercy. Yeah. What had happened was, uh, by July of 2018, uh, I started finding... One some, second, Ro. Yeah. Because when you do such devo intense devotional service in Vrindavan, taking its hardships and suddenly such health setbacks yes. hits upon you, hmm devotees, folks, those who are hearing this, Bhagwan, kya kar rahe hamare <laughs> What's happening? You know? Krishna is not like Pandavas. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I just want to throw, touch that part of philosophy or reality yeah. also. Yeah. yeah, sure. I can understand where you are coming from. Mm. So, by July of 2018, I started facing some difficulty in when I was speaking, some discomfort, yeah. some strange thing. I was not able to uh, put my finger on it. Something I am not okay with mm. speaking. So, went and met some neurologists in Delhi and couple of other people also and uh, they, they also tried this way, that way they could not figure out what it was. Mm. They gave some vitamin tablets, some, they did some blood tests and all that, nothing, mm. nothing was uh, practically nothing they could make out. And although I was feeling discomfort, when I was speaking, the pe person who is watching me could not make out anything. Mm. So, what happened was from July, uh, uh, every, as the time progressed by December, every uh, day that discomfort was increasing mm. and by December it had progressed to such an extent that uh, uh, when I would try to speak my mouth would not open. Actual knowledge Prabhupada was Paka but then Prabhupada is not Paramatma 
So, sometimes you will see when Prabhupada was giving some class, he would forget some words. Sometimes some words he would wrongly, he would... So, Prabhupada was not all-knowing. Prabhupada could commit mistakes. Prabhupada was not so perfect even on the material plane. Spiritual plane, Prabhupada was perfect. Actually, it is not true. This is actually the third offense to think like this. Guru Shu Naramatihi. Thinking like, Prabhupada will also commit mistakes like common people. So, it was, it was uh, you know, uh, so uh, the, uh, I went and met many doctors, came to Bangalore, went to Nimhans. They also did a lot of blood tests and all that. Even they were not clear what it was. Finally, Ravindra Chamadi ji, uh, one, one time he saw me and he was, he was mm-hmm. you know, naturally mm-hmm. all the people who are mm-hmm. meeting me, they are all nice mm-hmm. people. So, they felt very bad and he also felt very bad and he, he knew some neurologist in Kolkata mm-hmm. and he said, why don't you meet him? Mm-hmm. So, he organized an appointment. So, I went to Kolkata and met the doctor and uh, he saw me and he immediately said, you got jaw closure dystonia. Mm-hmm. So, he this could, is… He could diagnose. He could, he could diagnose. Mm-hmm. So, dystonia is a disease where it can affect any part of the body. Mm. Suppose there is a typist and he uses his hands, fingers for typing. Then his fingers, he can get dystonia mm. where he will not be able to type. The fingers will stop moving. Mm. Sometimes guitarists get mm. that, you know, it's mm. like that. So for me, my speaking had got affected. Mm. And he gave me some tablets. I started taking the tablets. The tablets would not work. Normally, this uh, dystonia, what I understood is, when it affects people, it is because of stress. Mm. And whenever people come across, when people with dystonia come across a stressful situ- situation, mm. their their whole, you know, wh- whichever mm. part of the body is affecting, uh, the dystonia is affecting, it will get locked up. They will not be able to, you know, perform at all. But in my case, interestingly, it was the reverse. Mm. We, we were, uh, I think it was uh, uh, 2019 or something, we had a, we had a, a Bhumi Puja for our Gurugam temple. Mm. And we had invited the governor of Haryana to come because Gurugam is in Haryana. The Haryana governor had come to uh, uh, the Bhumi Puja. So, at that time, Chanchalapati Prabhu was also there. I was there and we were all there. And then uh, Chanchalapati Prabhu told me, why don't you give the welcome speech mm. or thank you mm. speech, w- w- one of the two. I think it was a welcome speech. Mm. So, I said, Prabhu, I am not able to speak. Mm. Well, I, if I go on the mm. stage, I will not be able to talk. Prabhu said, no, 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 you go and try. Mm. So, I said, okay, Prabhu is telling, I cannot mm. tell no. So, I went on the stage. The moment I stood on the stage, all those lights flashing, cameras and all that, you know, flawlessly I was able to deliver that speech for 2-3 minutes and I came down. Everybody was, you know, wow, you know, this guy is completely normal. Mm-hmm. Then the moment I stepped off on the stage, again I was not able to speak. Mm-hmm. So, for me it was, it was their words. Mm-hmm. Anybody has this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of a disorder, when they are in such a stressful, stressful. situation, they cannot perform. Mm. Mine was reverse. You when put you me into a stressful situation, situation I will mm. perform. <laughs> Similarly, okay. you know, there was some television interview, you know, some, you know, they made me go and sit there. I was not able to open my mouth at that point of time. Mm. Moment the cameras are there, lights are flashing, you know, by, the famous you know, India completely, TV. I'm, I'm completely normal. The famous India TV then? <laughs> yeah, uh. you're right about that. <laughs> You'll see me talking there. At that time, I was in such a bad shape. Normally, I would not be able to speak. Mm. So, for me, chanting was very tough. It was one of the toughest things to chant at that point of time. At a stretch, I could chant maximum 3 to 4 rounds. Mm -hmm. So, my chanting my 16 rounds would be spread over 8 to 10 hours of the day. I would chant about 3 rounds, 4 rounds, then give half an hour, 1 hour gap, then again chant another 4 rounds, then give another gap, you know, like that over the whole day I would chant. So, I, you know, somehow by Krishna's Kripa, I, uh, I did not, uh, you know, it did not come to such a stage where mm-hmm. I could not chant at all. Mm-hmm. Somehow with great difficulty, it was not easy chanting uh, because, you know, the, the, the whole jaw would get, uh, would clamp down mm-hmm. whenever I would try to chant or speak. Mm-hmm. So, I had to struggle against it and try mm-hmm. to keep chanting. So, I had that uh, disorder for about almost uh, two, two and a half years. And then, uh, <clears throat> I think it was in 2020 that I went to uh, Jaipur. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a stint in Dehradun. I, I, I shifted to Dehradun at that time, probably trying to think maybe the weather a little, place. little, mm. little less, uh, mm. uh, you know, uh, moderate, a mm. little more moderate weather and uh, l- keeping away from the project related responsibilities, mm. less stressful situation. It may help all those kind of things we tried. Then from there we came to mm. uh, Jaipur. The coming to Jaipur also, what had happened was, it was I think uh, 2000, uh, 
19 or 20, 2019, I think, we, when we came to Jaipur and uh, <coughs> uh, that was when the lockdown was announced. Mm. Which year was that? 2020 March. Ah, 2020 March. So, mm. 2020 February, mm. I shifted to Jaipur. And uh, one, you know, uh, 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 my wife also and I, we both shifted all our luggage from Dehradun and came to Jaipur. Next day, lockdown mm. was announced. Oh, <laughs> So, yeah. nick of the time we shifted, otherwise yeah. she would have been struck in Dehradun, I would have been in the, struck in uh, Jaipur. So, but uh, you know, somehow Krishna's arrangement and uh, then uh, we, we were in Jaipur and uh, you know, those mm. three, four months of complete lockdown. All through that time, I was not able to speak, I wouldn't be able to give class, but still devotees would ask, somehow mm. I would go and speak a few words. Mm. You can even today see those yes, videos yes. in uh, That Jaipur. viral one that if you fall down again, that Huh, you, so, you spoke in that condition. Yeah, so all, the, all those videos, if you see, you can clearly make out. Mm. I was struggling to speak. Mm. Real struggle it was. So, uh, you know, and practically at that time, I had uh, resigned myself. I thought, okay, this, you know, tried Ayurveda, tried allopathy, tried homeopathy, mm. tried yoga, tr you know, but tried pranayama, mm. tried a, mm. acupuncture, mm. you know, mm. acupressure. Every, mm. anything and everything, what, whatever I would come across, I would try. Nothing worked. Mm. So, I, I had resigned, by that time, I had, by the time I came to Jaipur, I had resigned my, myself to the fact that, you know, I will be like this and I thought, okay, you know, I have to live with this. all these days, so much I have spoken, itna, itna baut bol liya, ab sunne ka time hai, baat ke vaishnoon ko sunte hai. I thought, okay, no more preaching, no more, no problem, I will sit and hear, that I had resigned myself to this fact. So, then what happened was, one fine day, I was sleeping, I had a dream. So, in this dream, I saw that I am going to one ancient Narsama temple. And uh, I'm having darshan outside. There was one, I think, Lakshmi temple or something like that. Mm. Had darshan, then went inside. Narsima was there. I sat down and I started singing Narsima Kirtan. And I was singing properly without all this uh, jocloser, uh, dystonia, and all those kind of things. Very nicely, I was singing, I was doing Kirtan of Narsima, Narsima Kirtan. Namaste, Narsima. Yes. Then I woke up. Then I woke up and I was surprised. Then I told my wife, you know, I had a dream like this. I don't know what this means. So, you know, okay, dreams come. And your name is Suyakta Narsimha Das. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence. Coincidence. So, then, uh, you know, uh, I very rarely I get uh, dreams about the Lord. Mm. Very, very rarely. Maybe in my life, one or two times I would have dreamt about the Lord. Mm. So, it was a surprise for me that, uh, you know, I had a, uh, I had a, I dreamt about Lord Narsimha. Mm. Anyway, didn't attach much importance to it. And about a week later, uh, one devotee, one uh, Brahmachari devotee, ba Balabhadra Prabhu in uh, Jaipur temple, mm -hmm. he had some knee, knee issue. Yes. There was pain yes. in his yes. knee, he was not able to sit down. So, he was uh, uh, consulting a uh, uh, homeopathic doctor in Jaipur. Very young uh, homeopathic doctor, just I think he had just started practicing, mm -hmm. not even married, mm -hmm. you know, very young. Just graduated and tried. Probably, mm -hmm. start, just started practicing. He said uh, he has been treating me. He spoke to my wife mm -hmm. and uh, told her, Sangini, he told Sangini that, uh, you know, why don't you show Prabhu to mm. him also? Because, you know, Jaipur, mm. all devotees knew the problem I was facing. So, she told me, there is this uh, uh, homeopathy doctor, why don't we try? I said, Are Baba, sub try kar liya. You know, wa what is there? Mm. Simply medicine, medicine, how much I will take? Chhodo. She said, no, 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 you try. I said, okay, to mm. keep her uh, this mm. one. I said, okay, I will try. Mm. Then the doctor came. He asked my whole history, how all those things happened and all that. And he spent about a one hour asking mm. my whole medical history. And then he gave me some medicines. And then I started taking them. And about a week into the medicine, uh, the problem increased instead of reducing. Mm. And I told my wife, you know, calm, mm, you know, mm. chodo isko. She was like, no, 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 he has given for one month. You have to, mm. you know, take this for a month. Mm. Are bar, bhas gaye, you know, why are you forcing this? No, 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 you have to take. I said, okay, Baba, you are telling, I will take. Mm. You know, very unwillingly, I kind of started taking. Mm. After another week, suddenly, I am seeing my mouth has started opening up. Okay. I was surprised, you know, I said, I said something is happening, I am mm -hmm. sensing, something is happening and I said this is real magic that is happening. So, I continued that medicine and in about two to three months came back almost 90 percent normalized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and uh, funny thing is that that Balabhadra Prabhu whose knee problem he was facing, his problem did not get solved. Okay. <laughs> So, another devotee, I was, I was sharing this joke with another devotee. So, that devotee heard the Sudhir Sampad Prabhu. Mm. He heard and he told, Prabhuji, jab Bhagawan ko kisi ka rog, usko, you know, theek karna hota hai, to aap kuch bhi medicine le lijiye, theek ho jayega. Aur agar aapko theek nahi hona hai, to aap chahe jitna best medicine le lo, 
तब भी वो ठीक नहीं होगा विच इज रियालिटी सो समाओ नरसिम्हा है डिसाइडर दैट यू नो टू टू क्लास इज दैट नो प्रोविन भागवतम या सो नाथ से चागतम उदन वतो मज्जतो नो दैट फेमस वर्ड्स सो यू नो समाओ नरसिम्हा डिसाइडर सो सो यू नो आई अंडरस्टूड दैट यू नो नरसिम्हा अपीयरिंग माय ड्रीम was to was really to to foretell that you know quickly i'll get cured and so after that more or less i've been able to function normally mm -hmm. so you know, that was a little personal journey mm -hmm. uh, but all through you know somehow by krishna's kripa i never uh, became despondent or mm -hmm. or uh, start doubting the process or something you know, i had only one prayer all through that difficulty to mm -hmm. krishna somehow allow me to finish my 16 rounds mm -hmm. i should not come to a situation where i am not able to chant that should not happen that was my constant prayer to the lord mm. so but of course even in between also there was one time when i felt sick with some fever mm. and i had very high fever and i was on antibiotics so four days my jaw locked down so hard i could not speak i could not chant also mm. so those four days i chanted with the beads in my mind mm. but after the four days i i was able to come back to chanting then every day i would do one or two rounds extra, extra uh, and over a period of several months i managed to complete that 64 rounds whatever i had missed so somehow krishna you know by krishna's kripa somehow krishna heard my prayer and i did not the 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 disorder did not progress to such an extent that i could not chant at all somehow by krishna's kripa i could continue chanting 16 malas which is a great saving grace so the message for those who go through such challenges in terms of health and other things message is very simple mm. simply stick to the process prabhupad has given mm. and uh, whatever karmic reaction has to come it will all get burnt out mm. and even uh, as far as i am concerned uh, probably in my karma it would not have been there for me to become all right but because of prabhupad's and krishna's kripa radharani kripa narsimha kripa the you know i am able to again function normally which which uh, according to me it is a it is a big miraculous mm -hmm. thing so if we simply determinedly keep following prabhupada's instructions and we keep praying to prabhupada and krishna in challenging times that please do not allow me to fall into a situation where i cannot chant Chant. as long as this prayer is on our lips krishna and prabhupada and narsimha will always protect us and they will keep they will always keep us in krishna consciousness mm -hmm. this is my firm conviction mm -hmm. okay so, uh, one last question regarding the vcm project and uh, one the famous devotee of the other side uh, said this uh, with loud mouth that this camp of ritviks will survive on until his grace madhu pandit prabhu and chanchalpati prabhu are there mm. after that it's gone mm. what do you say him what are your thoughts on that <coughs> see first of all it is uh, disrespectful and uh, offensive to talk about uh, vaishnavas uh, dying that you know after their time this will this will happen that will happen devotee vaishnavas it's not vaishnava etiquette mm -hmm. vaishnavas don't talk like that they don't think like that mm -hmm. they only always think that this vaishnava is there he is an advanced vaishnava how can i spend time with him and take association from mm -hmm. him so it is very painful to hear such things this is not the right vaishnava attitude Uh, 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 basic vaishnava etiquette uh, does not uh, you know forget about vaishnava etiquette mm. even in the material world mm. it is not manners to speak like this mm. so that way it is very painful um, and uh, such statements are born out of ignorance mm. ignorance and the uh, uh, and and uh, and uh, the inability or the uh, you know the the the, the uh, uh, not being willing to accept prabhupad's will and prabhupad's grace upon other vaishnavas mm -hmm. there is somebody who is far more advanced than me he is able to make progress more than me i will not accept that prabhupad's kripa is there on him mm -hmm. this becomes like that uh, prabhupad gave that uh, uh, that example that story about how one ningte pancho became a judge mm -hmm. and uh, all the friends were telling he might have become a judge mm -hmm. but i don't think he is taking mm -hmm. any salary mm -hmm. now you why because you know you don't want to accept mm. that prabhupad's kripa can be on on somebody other than me so they do not understand that this whole uh, revelation of the july 9 directive and how prabhupad's mission has expanded simply by following sticking to following shila prabhupad's direction without any deviation has resulted in such an expansive growth of this of this uh, movement uh, they are ignorant of these facts 
they think they know only to think materially mm -hmm. they are not able to think spiritually and see krishna's and prabhupada's hand in everything if we if we if we are in the material bodily concept of life we can, we will not be able to see krishna's and prabhupada's hand in things if we see spiritually uh, it is very clear that the you know what started as one single temple in bangalore with 40 to 50 devotees today has become a movement thousands of people more than almost 700 full time missionaries uh, above, uh, you know more, more than 30 35 centers all over all over uh, the, the the world and uh, the way we are growing expanding over and above this more than a thousand congregation initiated congregation i am talking and uh, thousands more who are practicing krishna consciousness by coming in touch with our temples this is a this is a movement this is not a one man uh, one man uh, institution like so many other uh, uh, things that we see so when people are blind to spiritual facts when people are blind to krishna's will when people are blind to prabhupada's will they 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 can make all such ignorant claims but the reality if you are open if you are open minded and if you are willing to accept prabhupada's and krishna's hand in things that happen in spiritual matters then you will be able to see clearly what is happening and i am sure none of the people on the higher uh, management circles in iskon will think like this mm. or talk like this this may be some people who are at the lower level mm. who have who are who are not who are not really uh, who are not re people who have really tasted the uh, the the uh, uh, the reciprocation of krishna and prabhupada in their lives they can think and talk materially like this i don't think you know the the uh, dogs may bark but the caravan will pass uh, there are many people who will talk all such kind of things we continue doing our good work Prabhupada and Krishna's, uh, Krishna are steering the ship of uh, the Hare Krishna movement group and uh, I am very confident that this will only grow with uh, time as long as we keep sticking to Prabhupada's rules and regulations and his instructions without any deviation, this will only grow as time goes by. This is not dependent on one or two individuals. Uh, uh, I am there today, tomorrow I am not there, it is not that the movement is going to fall apart. Prabhupada and Krishna are the person, Mahaprabhu is personally guiding this movement. So, it will continue to grow and from strength to strength. Uh, you talked about this, uh, we, we are spread all across the globe and we, I saw your pics uh, in Latin America in Peru if I am correct. Yes. So, what is that uh, about? Well, uh, recently uh, uh, I had to, uh, we were invited by, the, uh, by some of the devotees in uh, uh, Peru and Mexico to go and visit there. Uh, these are devotees who had taken initiation from some other guru and, uh, uh, and ultimately the guru had a fall down. So, all these devotees were, were completely shaken apart. Many of them lost faith in Krishna. They stopped chanting 16 rounds and it was that kind of situation. But still, they were, they were feeling a certain vacuum in their life that they needed somebody to guide them spiritually. That is how finally looking at all the things and the kind of mess that there is in ISKCON with all those 80 gurus and every year some guru falling down, new gurus getting appointed and all this mess which is going on. They contacted us and asked us whether we can guide them. And so that is how Jai Chaitanya Prabhu and I landed up in Peru and in Mexico and we, uh, we shared with them the July 9th letter and how Prabhupada wanted this rhythmic system. They were so completely, uh, so relieved. To, mm. to hear that we can take shelter of Prabhupada directly, mm. Prabhupada, we can accept Prabhupada as our mm. Diksha Guru. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, having such an exalted uh, Paramahamsa Vaishnava like Prabhupada as our Guru, uh, your spiritual life is, is completely taken care of. You have full confidence that you are in the safest hands and uh, there is no question of any fall down and all those kind of uh, stuff. Mm. So, they were very happy to, to hear all these things and we gave them all the philosophy. They had umpteen questions, we answered all of them. And uh, after uh, spending a, uh, four or five days with them and hearing from us, these people who since the last three, four years have, had stopped chanting, they had lost faith in Krishna. Again, right the, from the next day, they started chanting 16 rounds and uh, they have decided that they want to spread this message more and more and give the shelter of Prabhupada to more and more deserving uh, devotees. So, it was a wonderful experience and we were, uh, we are very glad that we could be small instruments in, in uh, guiding those, uh, those uh, souls uh, back to Prabhupada's lotus feet. Prabhu, is, is correct if what I am saying, 
in those initial days in 98 and 99 when there was a discussion we said that okay uh, let let us let us preach only in karnataka hmm. then they said no we are preaching in belgaum we cannot give in that karnataka then we requested shall we preach in only in mysore and bangalore hmm. that that's only two centers we are there hmm. is that okay for you then they no then at least bangalore city you give is, is, was it uh true that well, we asked uh, like that uh i'm not sure about uh, that kind of I, I, it's it's very difficult to recall that mm. i think something like that happened probably you should ask madhu pandit prabhu more about <laughs> that you know it's it's, it's uh, too many things were happening mm. at that time mm. and uh, uh, you know uh, and uh, madhu pandit prabhu was the person who was really uh, the you know at the mm. forefront of the communication at that point of time so many things mm. uh, discussions like this would have happened mm. and at one point of time actually in the year uh, 2001 i think 2000 or 2001 i think it was 2000 there was uh, some discussion actually from 1998 when the guru bush issue broke out for 2 to 3 years there were no initia- initiations happening in bangalore temple because we did not have a, a proper guru there were no ritwiks now what to do how will initiations happen mm. so all the devotees we used to you know anybody who has completed 6 months one year like that we would have a simple oath taking ceremony yeah. we would go in front of prabhupada and take an oath that we would chant 16 rounds follow all the regulatory principles blah 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 all those things mm. and we would select a name for ourselves <laughs> and then uh, we would we would uh, take on the saffron dress mm. and uh, why we did this because dt worship has to go on mm. we need brahmanas mm. we need second initiated devotees there was you know and initiations are not going on mm. and for second initiation we used to hear prabhupada's mm. uh, tape mm. and with that we used to start chanting gayatri mantra mm. so uh, th- so for about 2 uh, 2 two, two and a half years there were no initiations in bangalore temple mm. and the fight the guru issue fight was going on so at one point of time the gbc told uh, madhu pandit prabhu that in bangalore temple alone you can practice the ritwik system mm. so based on that it was a verbal mm. this one assurance given to madhu pandit prabhu based on that we conducted one ritwik initiation the year 2000 there all those you know we were all mm. uh, you know it was all uh, mm. accumulating the number of mm. devotees who had to take initiation so all of us who had only taken oaths but we are not taken initiation mm. one shot i think about 20 30 devotees mm. all of us together we took initiation mm. in that ritwik ceremony mm. now that news mm. went all over the world mm. and everybody started banging the gbc how can you allow this to happen mm. how can you do this and all those kind of things and then they told uh, madhu pandit no 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 no, no. we are this. going back on this mm. you cannot do this, this. Mm. so you know that was actually mm. the point when you know the, the things uh, mm. uh, took a different turn and then uh, finally you know it led to the point where in 2008 we had our own gbc mm. and we started having our own ritwik initiations and all that this brings to another question the question is who authorized mpp or the set of gbc so set of ritwiks in your group to be ritwiks yes that was that was that uh, that is a very important question uh-huh. because even to be a ritwik that person has to be authorized uh-huh. if you look at the july 9 directive also yes the ritwiks you, you cannot have uh, anybody and everybody uh, claiming to uh, to be a ritwik, ritwik on their own and on acting hmm. so that is not a prabhupad's uh, intention hmm. or uh, prabhupad the way prabhupad instituted hmm. it also so the ritwik has to be appointed by a gbc hmm. problem is we don't have a gbc hmm. the gbc whatever is there in iskon he is going against the wishes of prabhupada mm. so now what do we do mm-hmm. the only solution was that we have to have our own gbc and the gbc has to appoint ritwiks mm. so there is no other way mm. now how will our gbc get formed mm. the, because you know we, we, we their gbc was formed by directly by prabhupada prabhupada, yeah. prabhupada ordered them and prabhupada the, personally appointed them as gbcs mm. that's how they became mm-hmm. gbcs and further they have been adding people on their own mm. whereas in our case okay. mm. to form the gbc first the gbc to form we, uh, you know what do we do prabhupada mm. is not per, uh, mm. personally present here mm. so what we decided was we would take it to all the vaishnavas so we called all the vaishnavas of our group which numbered about i think 300 odd devotees were there and uh, these 300 uh, devotees were all full time missionaries spre- and initiated congregation were also there who were spread all over india and we called them all to bangalore in 2008 and we had a big meeting i remember we had a meeting in the mvt mm. and we told all the devotees that this is how the situation is so we are looking at the entire body of the vaishnavas for direction mm. so we said uh, uh, what we are looking at is we want to form a gbc of 9 or 10 uh, devotees and uh, they, uh, so now who will appoint the gbc mm. becomes the question 
So we took shelter of the direction of management. Mm -hmm. In the direction of management, Prabhupada has said that the body of the temple presidents elect from amongst them a, a body of the governing body. This was given in 1975. 1970. 70. 70. 1970 70. was the year when Prabhupada uh, uh, direction registered, mm. registered the direction of management mm. which is commonly known as mm. DOM. Mm. So, uh, of course, later mm. in 1977, Prabhupada also said that the mm. GBCs are for, mm. uh, they have to remain mm. for good and all those kind mm. of things. And 1970 to 77, Prabhupada did not institute elections in Iskon. Mm. All those things are there. Mm. But for us, as a starting point, we took shelter of the uh, DOM because DOM is also given by Prabhupada. Mm. So we said, we went back to the body of the Vaishnavas and we told them, we will give a list of all the devotees who are 10 years or more or 8 years or mm. some figure we mm. came up with. And we said, all these devotees who are more than this many number of years in the moment, we will make a list of all of them. And all of you together vote for 20 or whatever figure mm. we fixed at that point of time as the, uh, members of the TP body. We did mm. not have TPs, TPs at that time. Mm. We did not have a temple mm. presidents. We said we will create a temple presidents body. body. Mm. So you elect amongst our group who is the who are all the people who can form the TP body. Mm. So all the 300 people voted. We made a list of some 30 or 40 devotees who had uh, who felt who fulfilled that criterion mm. of uh, having uh, uh, having been in the movement for so many years mm. and. And uh, you know, uh, regular in their sadhana and, and all those kind of stuff, okay. good standing mm. and all those things. So, the entire body of Vaishnavas voted, and from that was formed the first temple president's body. Mm -hmm. That temple president's body, we got together and we said, now we will create a ballot of all the temple president's body members, and LNGBC. we have to, each devotee has to tick 10 names okay. out of this mm -hmm. who will, who all can be the GBCs, and that is how the first GBC, GBC was, was formed. formed. Okay. So, because we did not have a, an opportunity where we could approach Prabhupada directly and ask him to appoint mm -hmm. uh, some people as GBCs, we took the route of taking the mandate from all the Vaishnavas mm -hmm. and we took it as the direction of Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So that is how our GBC so how was. This prince process is connected with direction of management. Is there any direction in the direction of management to do such things? The direction of management also, Prabhupada, uh, actually the direction of management is a document where Prabhupada formed the GBC. Okay. The direction of management is the registered legal document through which Prabhupada created the GBC. Mm -hmm. And in that document, Prabhupada says that these are the 12 people whom I am appointing as mm -hmm. the first GBCs. So, Prabhupada personally appointed the first GBCs. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's the process we... So, and then the GBC appoint Rithviks and the Rithviks perform the Diksha ceremony yes. on yes. behalf of Prabhupada. They do not perform the Diksha ceremony. Mm -hmm. The Diksha ceremony can be performed by the temple president also. Mm. What happens is the temple president, he, uh, this is the system that Prabhupada set up very mm. clearly. Mm. Right from 1970, mm. Prabhupada started instituting the Ritvik system stage by stage mm. in ISKCON. Mm. Because you see, Prabhupada was very, very clear in his vision. Mm. In fact, even in 1970, when Prabhupada wrote the direction of management, what Prabhupada wrote in the direction of management was, I am 75 years old mm. and I may be out of the scene any moment. Mm. So, this was what was running in Prabhupada's mind at that time. Mm -hmm. That very soon I may be out of the scene. Mm -hmm. So, before that, I have to set up a system by which the movement will go on. Mm -hmm. I have to give directions how my disciples have to, uh, have to uh, continue the preaching uh, mission. Mm -hmm. So, right from 1970, Prabhupada was thinking and uh, uh, Prabhupada was working towards putting up systems in ISKCON which will continue to work even after his departure. Mm -hmm. So, right from 1970, you can see Prabhupada is giving directions to Kirtanananda, to Rameshwar and mm. blah, 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 all those uh, devotees saying that you start chanting on the beads, mm. you start uh, 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 conducting the performance, uh, you start performing the fire sacrifice. Mm. So, like that, Prabhupada actually stage by stage, mm. Prabhupada started instituting the earthquake system in ISKCON. Mm. So, by 1977 of July 9, Already the Ritvik system was in place and place working. working. Mm. So, the entirety of the Ritvik system was working in ISKCON already except for one thing which was choosing the names. Mm -hmm. In July 9th letter, Prabhupada handed over that also. Prabhupada said, you only choose the name also. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the choosing the disciple, Prabhupada was not doing. Mm -hmm. It was the temple president's duty. Mm -hmm. He would see the disciple for six months. If he is following all the regulations, he would recommend, recommend to Prabhupada. To Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada would choose a name, 
some other devotee who was closest to the temple he would chant on the beads or on the gayatri thread mm. send it to the temple president mm. temple president will conduct the yajna hand over the beads and announce the names mm. Even when Prabhupada was physically present, right it was from happening. 1970, Prabhupada started instituting this. So when the July 9th letter came out in 1977, Prabhupada was concrete. simply yeah. uh, putting on paper what was already, already running in his con. The argument that July 9th letter is meant for those times when Prabhupada was in physical presence is not right. Then it's, it, they argue like this. They argue like that. The point is. that system that propas set up can run in propas pre- physical presence also, also and in propas physical absence also mm-hmm. in one sense you look at it one of the devotees amayatma prabhu in one of his videos on youtube has asked the question so what when you say that ritvik system is only during propas presence mm-hmm. what do you mean to say is prop if propas is present with should present propas be present within the same country or should he be present on only on this earth planet mm-hmm. suppose propad were to travel to mars what would happen <laughs> or propad took a space flight what so propad went into orbit outside the earth mm-hmm. that time rhythmic system would mm-hmm. stop, stop functioning stop functioning okay <laughs> so the, you know so to 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 argue that this is meant for when propad is there not there all these kind of things these are all not mm-hmm. they are not relevant they are all childish arguments mm-hmm. this is the reality fact is it was a well thought out plan by propad mm-hmm. propad whatever propad did propad was very clear and propad built that system of rhythmic system over several years and propad personally saw to it being implemented in iskon mm. and being run until july 9th he came to the final stage and he said propad was confident yes this system is running well mm. it can go on he said okay names also you choose over mm. finalize it give it a stamp of final authority closed institutional directive that's it so what was already running mm. propad gave Stand final stamp that you continue it after mm. my time also mm. over simple so if you look at it from that perspective it is very clear mm. it was not some haphazard decision propad gave mm. or something on the spur of the moment propad without mm. thinking said something absolutely no mm. if you look at that may 28th conversation also mm. because the july 9 directive has come out of the may 28th conversation, conversation. in the july 9 directive itself it says recently when the gbc so, members were with uh, prabhupad hmm. what when was that that was on may 28, 28. Hmm. so may 28 what was the question put to prabhupad the question put to prabhupad was how will initiations go on in iskon particularly at the time when you are no longer with us hmm. the, but, the question hmm. no, was not who will be your successor uh-huh. the question was how will initiations go on in iskon what was prabhupad's immediate response I mean, Propad did not think. Let me think. Hmm. Or oh, should we do like this? Should we do like that? What are the options? Nothing. Immediately, Propad's response: Yes, I will app- appoint some of you as officiating Shri acharyas. Hmm. So Propad had already thought of it. Hmm. Propad had already instituted it. Hmm. So what is there to think for Propad? You know, already I've been doing it. It has come to the final stage. Oh, yes, I will appoint some of you as officiating acharyas and close the matter. Ritvik, yeah, yes, Ritvik. then the disciple of my disciple those are all after conversations uh-huh. forget all that uh-huh. okay all the disciple of my disciple grand disciples so many things are there mm. okay so finally uh, propad said i will appoint some of you mm. as regular gurus or as officiating acharyas what it is may not be clear from may 28th conversation. conversation although for me it is very clear, very clear. Uh-huh. for you it may not very be clear, clear. no problem so uh, what the gist of the may 28th conversation is what propad will appoint some people some people and mm. who what are they who are they okay, okay that you say let us hypothetically assume there is some lack of clarity there mm. that appointment when did it come it came on july Nin- 9th. 9th and what was that appointment for it was for officiating acharya yes. ritvik over over mm. in okay. the meeting i can discuss okay. so many things whatever you are not clear on mm. may 28th propad clarified Clarify. on july 9th no what more do you need <laughs> over the matter ends there ends there so that's all it is so mm. we should not unnecessarily you know create confusion uh, by saying that this is not clear that is not clear mm. everything is crystal clear mm. whatever propad tha- propad instituted in iskon propad thought very well about how he would uh, how the institution would continue even after his time mm. and with that end in mind propad instituted all this mm. it is very clear in the direction of management P- very clearly propad 1970 propad was thinking like mm. this very soon i may be out of the scene mm. therefore it is necessary to set up a system by which my disciples will be able to carry on the movement mm. all these things propad says in the direction of management 
So right from 1970, Prabhupada was thinking how the movement will go on even after his time. Mm -hmm. So whatever Prabhupada instituted in, in his con, whether it is the DT worship or it is the system of initiations or publishing his books, everything Prabhupada decided upon keeping in mind, especially at that time when he would no more, he would no more be in the scene. Mm -hmm. So the, the system of uh, Ritwik uh, officiating Acharyas with, which Prabhupada brought about in the July 9th was very well thought out by Prabhupada. It was not an off the cuff remark or something, you know, Prabhupada was not clear, something he did. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada never did think, uh, things hazily mm -hmm. or without clarity. Because Prabhupada was always getting direct uh, instruction from Krishna. And Prabhupada was implementing all those things. So there is no question of Prabhupada making any mistake or, or giving a wrong system or making some confusion, uh, confusing statements, nothing. If you look at Prabhupada, Prabhupada, told, what, he, what did he tell about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur? Mm. He said, my Guru Maharaj, the day before he left uh, his body, he spoke so mm. many things, but he never appointed an Acharya. Mm. So, no. wh what he, uh, he doesn't, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur doesn't know mm. how the movement has to go on. Mm. So, same way Prabhupada also, Prabhupada doesn't know how the movement has to go on. even question Prabhupada, Prabhupada was not appointed, they ask. See, if, if, if you don't have that much understanding of how Prabhupada was appointed, mm. Uh, what, are the, what right do you have to remain in ISKCON? Mm. If you have faith that Prabhupada is properly appointed, you stay in ISKCON. Otherwise, don't stay in ISKCON. No, mm. go somewhere else. Mm. There, is, there are so many people, there, is, uh, there, there are so many Mayavadis, there are so many other Sampradayas. Go wherever you want. So no. They will ask, why do you have to come to ISKCON? Why are you telling me this? I may do whatever I want. You, you See, the, uh, whatever you want, but when you are within ISKCON, you have to have faith in Prabhupada because mm. ISKCON is Prabhupada's institution. Mm. Outside ISKCON, you don't have faith in Prabhupada, nobody will question nobody you. We don't have right to question mm -hmm. you. If you come into ISKCON, which is Prabhupada's institution, and you, uh, and you question the very authority of, of Prabhupada, Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. then the, who are you, Bhaiya? Mm -hmm. Have you come to break the institution of ISKCON? You, an outsider comes and uh, questions the authority of ISKCON, I can understand. understand. Mm -hmm. You come in ISKCON, you eat Prabhupada's uh, remnants, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever uh, Prabhupada is giving out of his uh, immense mercy, Whatever arms is giving you, you are begging from Prabhupada and eating, and then you are uh, questioning the authority of Prabhupada. So, one uh, devotee asked Prabhupada this very question mm. When did your uh, spiritual master appoint you? Yes. What was Prabhupada's response? Yes. Be in your this limits. Is such, uh, mm. Be in your mm. limits. Mm. Is this such a th cheap mm. thing that mm. I have to tell you? Tell you. Mm. So, that itself shows how this is a very serious thing. Mm. If you are doubting your own Sampradaya Acharya, then you have no right to be part of, to call yourself part of the uh, Sampradaya. Mm. Why are you in this Sampradaya then? Mm. Go and be part of some other Sampradaya. Mm. No problem. Mm. You be a Mayavadi and you question Prabhupada, I have no uh, this one about that. Mm. You remain in ISKCON and question Prabhupada, then I have a mm. problem there. This is the whole thing. Mm. So forget about, um, you know, um, ISKCON people. Even Mayavadis don't question the authority of Prabhupada. This is the reality. Today you go to Gaudiya Mart, you go to anywhere else, everybody accepts Prabhupada is a bona fide Acharya appointed by his spiritual master. Mm. Nobody questions that. Mm. Who are you to question it? So, you know, if, if you become offensive like this, mm. then uh, nobody can save you. This is the reality. It was very lively and enlightening to know about the things which, which went through in Escon Bangalore in the 90s and and your struggle in Vishyam to establish the temple and the further projects coming up in Chennai. We didn't speak about Chennai for the positive of that time. <laughs> Probably next time when we meet, we'll sure, to sure, have sure. your association once sure. again. Thank you for your time. And My pleasure day. and privilege mm. to be with all of you devotees in Ahmedabad. Mm. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.